Well, good evening everyone. Welcome to SOS 144, an SOS that's available that's visible by 12. Wow, I'm here with Jake. Hi hi Jake. <laughs> oh my god, math. I can't I can't I can't do that stuff. Uh but hi, hi, I'm I'm Jake. Um <laughs> yes, welcome to SOS 144. <laughs> it is divisible by uh twelve. In fact, if you square if you square root twelve you get you or square root one forty four you get twelve. Yeah, and yeah, so that's why the math joke is a thing. But yeah, uh, don't mind, don't mind the last graphic that the last fight that exists. There, there is not two people that name Asan and Rizu that is playing together yeah. in in a match. Um, but we are seeing the crab for the jelly squids. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> jelly squids is a is a name you've probably seen around. They've done a lot of tournaments and stuff. Um, yeah, they're they're very very well known team cranberries. You know, I I. I'll be honest, I haven't really heard much about them, but I'm interested to see how, what they do and what comps they pull out here. As we get into our first stage here, uh, Clam Blitz Museum. Uh, Joran, what are your thoughts on this mode? Well, Clam Blitz Museum is honestly a map that could be a little bit snowballing once you get the group going on. For the side of Jalous, because we know they have a backline, so they can do really well on that, but for the side of the Cranberries, they seem to have some noble nades from, I recall, Aimer or in Cloud. But it doesn't look like fun Cindy profile, but at least for Cloud. And they do have some noble plus playing in SOS for Lantern and Mega Packet. So these teams are actually going to be really close to each other. If it is going to be like that. But we are going to be seeing the difference of a pickup and a synergy of a team that actually plays together. Yeah, but I mean, on the contrary, we have seen plenty of pickups when, you know, SOS, Low Ink, a bunch of other tournaments pick up. If you have a strong pickup of friends that, like, know each other, you can go farther than most, um, you know, regular teams, so. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely for sure, but who knows? Coldspear, Clem, Amor, and Cloud could surprise out on the map, but again, with the Vata Jelly Squids, they have six people who usually play with each other. Again, Mudkip, Nano, Diamond, Sick, Hamlum, and Mark. All mm -hmm. of them are known for each other, but, but definitely for Clamp and we most likely will be seeing Crack and Cheese. Because again, if you didn't fill out the form on the Tournament Guild, TL Guild, fill it out. Fill, fill it out. This will, it will help the community for the future. So yeah, if we Get might back. not be seeing this. <laughs> Get crack cheese out of here, please. <laughs> <laughs> as we uh, as we get into it here, we see the Hydra coming out from the side of Cranberries on the side of Jelly Squids. We see the Edit, the Splash Neo, and the V Charger coming out. I do like this um this V Charger pick because of um being able to use that Ink Vac to help facilitate pushes. Yeah, you know what that's crazy as well? It looks like for the side challenge, but they're running a basically double backlight because they have the edit and they have and they have the side together, but it technically can be in midlight because the heavy I mean, it does have a lot of one speed and can shoot pretty well. But on the side of the base, like that cloud is what I remember. They are fun of forgotten since I guess expanded, but still they're running a more aggro comp, but they have a lot of range with the hydro and the range bots as well. I mean I'm I was very surprised by the Hydra. I mean Hydra's one of those one of those um weapons you don't really see in compass. We see a snipe coming out from uh what I believe was I didn't see who it was. The charger, giant diamond, you know. Oh yeah, Sig. Uh Sig coming out. The booyah bomb coming out from the Hydra. Um we see that ball not able to get anywhere here. Sig is uh Sig is doing a really good job here of keeping um keeping control and making sure that, you know, the players don't get out of out of their sight lines as that's two down on the side of, of cranberries, including their Hydra. Sig is trying to get the third one here. They're able to get the third one. That's huge there, but Sig goes down and that's three down on the side of Jelly Squids. This is going back and forth. And it's going back and forth. Nuggets even get a double here. So it's able to actually do push the cranberries up a little bit farther. But again, because of the comments that we have right now, it's a little bit slow pace of the same with Jelly Squids. So that's honestly quite for both sides. It basically is going to be a whole stall for some event. We are going to be seeing Cloud and just pick up the ball. We might see two months on Sonic Cranberry as well. We are going to see it be coming up from the Hydro. We're seeing the truck coming out as well. But because of both of them, they are able to pop in soon up, but no, they get cancelled. Yeah, that was a nice Zooka. They're able to really kind of stop the momentum. They did have that cooler though. So they were able, um, they, they were able to, you know, respawn fairly quickly here. We see though, uh, Cranberries are able to get on the plot of Jelly Squid here, but uh, uh, the range watchers barely able to survive that. They're able to get out of there 
and regroup with the rest of their team. They have seven clams. They're close to a ball. So even if that, even though that ball right there is um, is being, you know, is going away, we see here the Booyah coming out from the Hydra. Great timing on the Vac. They're able to stop them, but the Vac gets canceled out. And suddenly, uh, Cramias are able to score here. Yeah, and that score is going to be really curious on the side of Krampus because that's going to be the first push in under two minutes and 20 seconds. But because of that, that's going to be enough score. Well, enough score for a push. That might be actually the whole game as well because, again, we saw for the whole two minutes that this is just basically a stall fest between the middle of left and right because, again, the Hydra, the Blaster, the Sniper, the Edit, all together just battling in 1v1. We see just Coast Beauty here just battling out for the mid, but we seeing them being the last one alive because we see Hamlet just going in and going for Aqua. And because of that, they got a wipeout on the side of the base. We are able to push in the ball if they have enough clans, which they do are able to get that clam in and that's going to be a score but will they be able to push with that with that clam we see the vac coming out able to uh oh. i don't think they're able to go with the hydra's able to go down there though but cranberries are doing great are great job defending there and they were able to get three down on the side of uh jelly squids and they're able to stop that push right before it starts jake by the way they got the vac snipe that was sick. <laughs> well honestly with that too oh, that was the vac snipe? I didn't, that I, was I, the vac snipe i thought some Damn, that was a good backside. It, it was crazy, man. But because of that, I can be seeing the soft fence mid up by one point for the side jelly squids. And because of that, we are going to be seeing them try to act up in mid. I can say it's going up with the cooler. Mark's having the cooler out already. We have three spots on the side of Krampus, but they don't have the cooler ready. And because they don't have cooler, it's just getting a double on a huge type right there. They're playing, they're playing just more defense on the aqua for the side of uh, jelly squids versus cranberry. Yeah, and I mean, two down on the side of Cranberries here. They're in a good... Uh, Jelly Squids is in a good spot. They really only need one score here to take that lead. With um, a minute left coming up here, the minute... A minute left right now, they're in a very good spot here. They need to get picks. We see the... the all the specials coming out. They're pushing that ball up. Will they be able to get it in? They are They are able to get it in. They miss it. The Vax coming out. They're not able to get it in again. The Vax, the Vax is able to get the shot. Oh. Not get anyone, but they get the ball... And they get the ball at a great play from Sig there, taking the lead. That's three down on the side of Cranberries, and suddenly uh, Jelly Squids has busted this thing wide open, getting getting another Whoa. ball. No, they missed the ball, but they're getting so many more clams, and they bring it all the way down to 59. What a push from the side of Jelly Squids with just under 30 seconds left. That, that was some main character syndrome right there for the side jumps, but gave it to get in that last second for the side of, I think that was sick. They're getting the ball, but that last second of the jump throw, it was really unfortunate for that. But again, that score of 59 is still really huge for the side of Cranberries and for the Jolly Squids. Because Jolly Squids, they have, the, Jolly Squids is just can hold. That's all they need to do for Cranberries. They have a ball, but they need a one. Basically, they have two balls they can get for the victory right there. The strike is coming up, but just go, just going to go for Ramp. They try to solo out Hammond, but just going for a trade. But literally, next is going to be the last one right. They need to have the rest of the team push up with Hydra going up alive, and the Rage Buster is there as well. They just need to score. But they get one ball in, but they have to get the other one. The strikes are coming out. That's three down on the side of Jelly Squids. They're able to get it in, and they're able to take the lead and steal the game from Jelly Squids. It took two minutes for the whole game to up with the whole special. There's no cracking here, it's just range. And with the range, in the end, the Cranberries were able to clutch it out. Just in a matter of time, matter of patience, which they wanted to have overall. And because of that, they got the first point. Yeah, and a great push from the side of, of Cranberries. They're able to, able to really, once they get got that ball and they were able to, you know, get the picks and, and where they were able to, you know, go, they were able to put um, Jelly Squids in a three down position, which is huge in Clan Blitz. That allowed them to get that second ball in and, and essentially win the game with that with that ball. Yeah, but we cannot count Jelly Squids being, being able to go for the first wipeout of the game and able to push it all together and also get that sneaky jump in with the score and to make it down to 59, which lasted for at least a good 30 seconds of the game to get the score in but because of that in the last few seconds they were just able to just hold on through and cranberries were able to get the first score but now tc makeup jake what do you think about it this is this is definitely a very in my opinion it's it's very even um it's it's when it comes to this you always have to worry about try if you get past that second checkpoint you're really in a good spot you have like a good push there it's hard to beat because that second checkpoint it's right by the snipe on the side of um on you know on the side of the defenders which is huge because it's hard it's it's easy to defend 
and it's hard to you know get past that second check once you get past that second check you know um it's easy to like i said it's easy to defend so if you get past that second check the other team um it's hard for the other team to try and get that second check and you can just you know stall them out i expect to see you know um try strikes maybe uh maybe we could see a booyah again i don't know exactly the um the weapons that everyone on cranberries plays but if they brought up the hydra before they could bring it out again here the booyah would be great on getting great for getting people off tower yeah but also as well for cranberries they had the range blaster as well so with both of them going going together that would be huge for dark jomeko definitely on the sex point as you mentioned but also for the size jelly squids they had the sniper and they had the edit as well this is going to be a basically a different if they don't change a difference between aoe and shots it basically bullet hell so <laughs> it's going to be depending on how that first checkpoint lays off and then after the rest of the run after after they make the check at the second checkpoint and they survive that that is going to be definitely a certain certain guarantee if they win because this map is no body after the first checkpoint if you aren't able to defend but also one thing to know is as well they th both teams doesn't have that much bombs mm -hmm. if you think about yeah. it yeah yeah i mean really um jelly squids had had the splat bomb from the the scope and then the suction bomb from the uh the zap but that was really about it i mean you have an auto bomb from from cranberries for the hydra um but i mean there was like you said there wasn't really that many that many bombs if you think about it there was only really two on each side um depending on what they pick here that could be huge because a lot of teams like to go for you know three four three even four lethal bomb um weapons when it comes to tower control to be able to bomb people off that tower and make sure that they don't they aren't able to push it as easier without having to having to rely on building special i think both teams had a third bomb by a shot or something but honestly that's a bomb battle between suction bomb and a uh, spot bomb but honestly as you said jake again having three to four bombs is going to be huge on top control in general because if you can throw, keep throwing them at the tower it's going to be trying to help them avoid it at all costs but as we see for as it's as the match is going in oh my gosh we're seeing two <laughs> elos one of one each other we are going to be seeing yo yo back with the range party we are going to see him work with the enemy once again and we are going to be sticking basically sticking with three bombs and then just the wave break but well, actually that would be for the cranberries who is in the green i mean yeah like seeing seeing one e leader is, is is crazy but seeing two one on each side is is uh definitely a shocker we see the zoom come out from hammer here um they are they aren't able to get one they're barely the strikes coming out barely um getting the the e leader off position they're able to get it but they get traded out that's a good trade from the side of uh from the side of cranberries nugget there with that with those tri strikes tri strikes like we said being able to push uh push jelly squid back here in this situation uh the tower has been stuck in mid for this entire first minute pretty much yeah it's like in the first minute because again both team has the range battle right now with the edit and the, and the edit and both healers and the range battle they want to play around each other and play it together as we see two on the right side for the side of cranberries we also see like a joint going for the right side that ends up trading with the splash as well so now it's going that's going to actually be a good support uh difference between both sides so no strike no cooler for each side that is going to be nugget once again trying to what we want and actually take it to the shop it's going to be a little bit huge they have cooler as well so they respawn pretty quickly yeah, and I mean, that was a nice flank from the shot, but they, realistically, they did not want to get traded out there. That's three on that right side there by that leader. That's going to be huge for, you know, pinching the, um, pinching the opponents here. But Diamond able to get out of there. That's three down on the side of, uh, Cranberries. That's a wipeout on the side of Cranberries. And Jelly Squid just looking to break this thing wide open with this first push. They're going to be able to get it to that first checkpoint, but will they, will, will they be able to get it? past this first checkpoint with all these bombs being thrown oh uh, yeah and by the way you you wonder who made that triple happen sig sig was on the left side and just being on point and just sniping one of one one on the left side with the help of the rest of the team of jelly squid ham one on the left side with the zuko already just killing off one the auction once again going down so it's not gonna be striked for them at all everyone on the country just stuck in the base right now because sig ham and the rest of the team of jelly squid just stuck pushing to the second checkpoint i said before which is going to be crucial for them as they actually technically wipe out softly the crab are able to come back now but how long will it take for them yeah i mean a delayed wipe but 
um, Jelly Squibs was able to get it past that big second checkpoint here. So, with the response coming from the side of Jelly Squibs, they will be able to defend that second checkpoint. They're even able to defend that first checkpoint. As we see one going down on the side of Cranberries, there is that the is that uh that Octo shot, which is just the T Tech kit. Uh, you know, so that's their strikes gone. They, they were able to get it back quickly because they did have cooler and they're able to use those strikes on that top right snipe getting them pretty much a free a free check but this uh the strikes coming out from the side of jelly squids as well um pretty much just prolonging that that check here um as we see two to two down on the side of jelly squid bazooka coming out from them uh able to get this able to get the e-leader that's a huge pick even though they have cooler um yeah but cranberry is taking the tower again they're just trying to push this slowly yeah, they are trying to push them slowly, but surely again, we saw before for the Cranberry, they were able to just play slow first and then able to just come back at the end. But they might be trying to plan it all together again, because the Jellicers, they might be trying to play, they, they might be trying to make Jellicers play a little bit too lag, just play like, oh, we're safe here, and then just come back in the last second, which happened before. But for right now, we just need to see Cranberries just set up for the right direction, which for right now, with the Shrike actually casting it out, it's not going to be looking well for them. That's in such an unfortunate position to be caught in, getting getting tapped by that strike and just shredded there. Uh, we do see though, Cranberry is able to get three down. It's just this uh, edit there, just the ed edit. They're gonna be able to get the cooler out. But they have to they have to wait for respawns here. This is a good position for Cranberries as they have gotten past that first checkpoint here with just under a minute remaining. They're able to they're able to um, get it down to the second checkpoint. Those strikes are gonna be very crucial. Forcing the edit to drop down, they're gonna try their hardest to survive, but that's three down on the side of Jelly Squid, and suddenly this is looking favorable for the side of Cranberries again. That three down on the side of Jelly Squid is actually gonna be huge on the side of Cranberries, but if they were able to get to check by Mano, they not, because they were able to get three down themselves for the side of Jelly Squid to their advantage, and now they're just gonna be fighting the top of the fish with 30 seconds remaining. The last chance for Cranberries is gonna be right now with the Elo coming down, getting a double pick as well on the tower. Yo Yo is on the on the left side, but do they recognize Hamyum on the left side of the tower? I think they do. No, they don't. Hamyum, Hamrun is able to get one, able to get two. That's a huge flank from the side of Hamrun. The range is trying their hardest to keep to sail to keep on this tower. Oh Yo -yo, no! Trying their hardest, but they're under the tower. They have to paint the walls. Sig is able to get one. It's looking to be over. They have the tower still, but that's two oh. down to the bombs and Jelly Squidge able to bring this to a game three. Splat bomb for the win, honestly, uh, for that single match because the tower is all recognized by bombs. And it's because of that single clutch second, once again, now it's going to Jelly Squid's favor. Off by a point this time to them. Yeah, I was a close game. And I mean, first first set, game three, this is starting off pretty hot, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, it is starting off pretty hard, but at the same time, it's starting off pretty cool because they're taking it slow. They're making it a, they're making a slow burn for the whole match. They're making it, they're making it just play off each other for a little bit, and then they're just going full force action at the last second. Yeah, I mean That's it's like stuff. it's like a, it's like an anime arc out here with this <laughs> with just in one set. <laughs> real. That's real. But now that we're going to splash the ship shape cargo. This is going to be full on interesting because this is a stalemate mode, which is for a stalemate mode, it's going to be more likely like clam blitz, but with more like put active snake and stuff, it could be like tower control yeah. because we just need to focus on objective. So in this favor, it could literally go either side. You might see the E lead battle again. There's no way that we're going I... to be screen sync Kraken because it's not clam blitz, but it's possible. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think anything, really anything is possible. We already saw a Hydra in this set. I'm, I'm, someone's, watch, someone's gonna pull out like an arrow spray. <laughs> They're gonna, it's gonna be silver arrow spray, three mains of special charge. Trust me on this one. This is sadly not CCAJ, so it might not be possible yet, but maybe soon it, enough. It, it, it's possible. If you think about it, it works though. Cause it, it zones, you use slider, easy. <laughs> And it does have a suction bomb too, so honestly, that is doable, but does it, have suction? I don't it does have it does have suction bomb, so it is like, doable. I see like two arrow sprays in ranked, much less competitive. I'm I'm not gonna remember the kit, so I'm just gonna go with you on that one. But I mean uh ship shape uh, zones here. The very interesting thing about this zone is that it's kind of like under the snipe. It's it's like there's a second uh 
layer to this uh to this map it's it it's it makes it very interesting for um certain plays because you, if you you want to make a game saving play with you know maybe like reef slider you can just drop in um uncontested to the uh, tldr the opposite of surgeon it's basically surgeon but flipped upside down TLDR. exactly yeah, but because of that, now we're going to be going to the match. We see the Hydra and the Range Blaster once again, the same old comp we saw before from the Cranberries in the first set. But in the second set for Jelly Squid, we're seeing, we're seeing the same comp for them there. So it's going to be a difference between Schweikes and Booyah and Rave Baker. Yeah, I mean, a very good comp on the side of Jelly Squid here. They're able to get the zone early, but they're not able to hold it much. There's two down on the side of Jelly Squid, so this will be a good push from the side of um cranberries but those strikes not able to neutralize the zone that'll be huge as that allows more points for uh cranberries here as they're already down this down to uh down into the 60s which is which is quick the like zones is a very quick mode here it's a very very fast pace here as they're already get already getting it down to the 50s if you're jelly squid you're trying to build specials here again yeah, 100%. We see fun, fun time on the top that every second is going to be two ticks on the on the point board. We see Nugget just here getting a double. The, the rest of the cameras are able to punch up as well, but they get sniped up by sick. Which is going to be on the top right, guys. Horse Spirit is going to be last time alive on the top right, just holding on for a little bit of charging action with the Hydra. They are going to play falling off the Booyah, but Judgment's first score coming at you. It might be a stop push right now, but because all of them are still going to be alive, Yolo is on the bottom. Yolo's push in power with the top of Cloud and the rest of the team. They are able to recap the summons again, but because of the strike, they are able to punch it back for Jelly side of Jelly Squids. The Eggie Leader on top is going to get cut off by the Blaster with the Wave as well. The Hydra going to go down as well. The Shark going to go down as well. It's just going to be a whole fist fight in mid, Jake. It's just a, it's just a dog fight here, as they say. We see uh, Kramer is able to get one. They're able to try. They're able to start something, but they do go down. We see the jump there, barely not able to get cancelled out, <laughs> and it baits their teammate pretty much as the zone neutralizes here. Yo-Yo is two down on the side of uh, Cranberries, but Yo-Yo able to get one. That range blaster is using their range in such crucial ways here, as um, while Jelly Squids has the zone, they are in a bit of a tough spot. No specials, two specials on the side of Cranberries. We see that wave breaker coming out, and suddenly one's marked, one goes down, but Sig able to get a beautiful snipe there and get a mine on that zone, which can be huge for keeping a cap. That's two down on each side, three down on the side of Cranberry Sig. Oh my god. Sig hitting the charge is wild because that hitbox is so insane. It's just basically a snap for Sig. So GG's on that in the end. Yoldo able to not actually escape it because they get cut out in the end by the rest of JavaScript, but with them recapping done so much again. Sig just in perfect charge, just able to find a 2 one Another big figure coming up for the bottom as well. It's going to be charging up Cloud actually. That's going to be the Booyah actually sim off camera for a little second, but they are actually able to be able to beat out the zone. Nugget's gonna be one running in mid. The Curly Bomb is able to paint out in mid. Nugget's gonna go down by Hamworm. It's gonna be a trade off, and Judge Switch is gonna be recapping the zone once again. Yeah, and Sig, Sig set up in that top, in that, that top snipe area. That's gonna be huge. If um, Cranberries can figure out how to get Sig off of there, they might be able to push this up. They also have to build specials here. Yeah. Me too. It's gonna be a good, uh, a good jump. Uh, we see here Yo Yo. Uh, bringing out, they're bringing out Kazuka here. Uh, they aren't, I don't think they're able to get anybody here, but Yo Yo able to try and get behind them. They do get one, it's two down on both sides. Uh, Mark from Jelly Switch able to get behind them with the edit. Will they be able to get anything? No, they won't. Look at that's a huge pick. The strikes coming out from the side of Jelly Squids. They're using all their specials, they're using everything. It's nine, eight, seven, six, three down on the side of Cranberries, and Jelly Squids will be able to get this set. The hole from Jelly Squids at the hole. Last few moments of the set, basically for the last 40 seconds on the set of overall, but just full on power. Sig was able to get those shots and just hang on, able to get those sneaks. Nugget, just during the whole match, we're trying the best to survive with the rest of the team as well for the side of Cranberries, but because they're not able to be pushing ahead, it just being unfortunately picked so well for the side of Jolly Squids, we see them move on to the one. And that's a huge first. I mean, every set counts in. When it comes to when it comes to groups in SOS, you only get three rounds of groups compared to and compared to say you know low ink where you have six 
four rounds to determine where you stand. Every set matters in, in groups when it comes to SOS because you can't lose one set and be like, oh, we can go next. You lose one set, you're probably going to, to um, drop down from, you know, the top bracket. So, uh, Jake, you know what's, you know what's funny? What? Uh, so there is, remember, uh, this seed is C26 with C27 in group A. So this is the most close set we're going to be seeing based off seeding. And also there's three people in the group. So there is no one going to go to Lantern Bracket, bracket but they are going to be going to lowest Maker Bracket, but also as well. Seed 1, Little Boy Squad, they need to fight them next. So good luck Wait. for them. <laughs> um, either way, Seed 1. But also, we are going to be moving on to the next set immediately. Well, more or less, me and Melee, uh, because they already, but Jake, any last word people that we move on to the next set? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus, well played. Uh, that might be the last thing to see, but uh, what we could say right now. Great word, be... <laughs> great word. <laughs> it's fine, but honestly, words is fine. Words, English, whatever. Uh, Next match, it's gonna be. Ford F-150 versus Lost Things Lanes. We're going to be in the room soon enough. Uh, I don't know if we need a break because uh, because the calm, uh, because the whole set needs to be in the room. Uh, Ford F-150, if you want to know some information, Ford F-150 is a Div 4 level, Div 3 level team. They have vulnerable players from previous teams like Torrent is one of them. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. I think X Men was probably my like, my like paradise, but Masa, mm -hmm. Masi Hubi, Gabman, Blue Timmy, all of them um, has been around before. And Lost Inklings. You want to talk Lost about Lost Inklings? Inklings? Yeah, a very you know well well known low ink team. Probably one of the oldest teams that that are still in low ink, and one of the oldest teams really out there still. I mean, they've been playing for so many years now. It's crazy. They lost the Klingons. I've been playing as long as I've been playing as Incom, kind of. But yeah. Lost Klingons has been going on and playing Splatoon, Com for at least six years. They all want the oldest Low Wings team to still be on band, just like the Webways. They are the second oldest team, or they're basically tied together to be the oldest team to be banned from Low Wing. But honestly, no more players. Hammy, Slug, Teresa, and I think that's a uh, code. Uh, something like that. Oh no, Equals. Equals is the name, but it's not locked in the roster. That's the one that you know and love, basically, more or less. The OG, the, well, the new OG roster for Lost Inklings. Yeah, I mean, well, this should be a very, a very good set here. I mean, two teams that are very well known, two teams that have a lot of players that, that people would know. It's, it's, Definitely, it's definitely gonna be, it's gonna be exciting to see as we start here on Flat Zone the Robo Ramen. Yeah, and one thing to know as well, Lost Inklings is going to LTC. 4 to 50, they're not, but <laughs> they, but they have also, basically this is just, this is something just going around. This is just LTC practice for, <laughs> for, um, for, what's their name? For Lost Inklings. Lost you know Inklings. that way. Yeah. <laughs> yep, you know that way. It's gonna be a practice for all they say. But for four to one fifty, this is just practice for the huge full high level level comp player to play comp team called battle because Neon Rail was on Mondays. We have on Sundays as well, uh Proven Grounds, which mostly used to say Mapool. There is a Mezzo as well, Met Circuit Mayhem on Tuesdays, and then there's this on Wednesdays, and then there's level up on Fridays, there's there's like Clock Clash High Dive. Yeah. There is a lot of tournaments that the D teams can play, and definitely for four up from fifty as well. There is a pop up at mid level tournaments, but there's always low level tournaments for lot of like to play in as well. Which for the actual casual viewer, they can do that as well. Yeah, I mean, lots of tournaments, lots of stuff coming up. I yep. mean, we've got so many, so many tournaments that people can play, and so many tournaments that people can watch. The casual few, casual viewer. This, despite you know. The meta not being the best right now, this really feels like the healthiest comp has been since probably the beginning of Splatoon 3. Yeah, and also talk about so many tournaments, if we can take a little bit of a second to talk about a certain land tournament that's going to be coming up, uh, helping up by CCA, that's going to be MomoCon. Uh, 
yeah, Momicon and Spotlands. But we're going to talk about more of that later. That's the weapons pick that's going to be right now. So let's talk, talk about the maps. We're we'll looking at maps if we can. Mostly talk yeah, about the maps. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we got Robo, we got Zones, Robo Rom, and TC Haggle and Rainmaker Scorch Gorge. A lot of very, uh, a lot of maps that you would see in map list here. I mean, Zones, Ramen is very, very. I mean, Ramen in general, people know it for its big flanks. You know, you were able to go on pretty much under the map to flank behind them. If people aren't aware of that, they can go two, three down and suddenly you're in a good position here. So watching the flanks is going to be crucial. Yeah, it's going to be really crucial. So we're just going to be seeing them wait for a little bit for the side of Bubble Ramen. So we really just need for a little bit more defense. We need to see a little bit more waiting for the side of either side but for four depth from 50 they have a lot more aggro velocity leads i know they have a roller i know they have a hydro again they might have uh, no i think happy plays sniper or hydro under the two equals play shot and teresa plays slosher so yeah four depth from 50 pencil shot shot zap or slosher if i remember so correctly so Josh. like double, double shot pencil maybe double shot mode? pencil yes and then like some, some other like four there's we get but we do get into it we see a pencil a brush from the side of f-150 we see a try and a heavy from the side of los inklings that's that cooler the cooler try and we also see the um we see the the v slosher there coming out from hammy a very interesting comp from the side of los inklings Lost Inkling is definitely going with the double slosher comp. This is seeming like three point like weapons at 3.0 coming in with uh with from Sonder at Big Dabble. But honestly, this comp does work pretty well because it's have a cooler, they have a lot of range with the slosher, and also they have a lot of bomb. But for the side of 4 that from once we see the brush, we see the shot, we see the splash, we see the <laughs> we see the pencil. We know how much the paint that they go go through right now. But with the tries to coming out right now, two down on the side of Lost Inklings. We don't know side of Lost Inklings. We see 4 of F-150 just going to the zone and playing more defense more or less right now. Yeah, I mean, that's 2 down on the side of Lost Inklings. 4 of F-150 in a very good spot here. We see X-Men just setting up in that setting up in zone, trying to watch trying to watch every single, um, you know, angle imaginable from that that zone. They're doing a very good job at keeping pressure while staying in zone, making it so that, that it's, hard, it's harder for Lost Inklings to get back in zone as we see here yeah okay. the x-men able to try and you know try and keep the zone the zooka coming out unable to get anything as we see that that sprinkler on the ramen on the ramen bolt being able being a, a nuisance there keeping the zone sort of painting and made it making it easier for ford f-150 to paint here hammy and and theresa both in a situation they're having to back out and this looks like ford f-150 might cap no the strike's coming out to stop them yeah, they are able to stop them more or less right now, but on the side of 4 to 50, they are able to cap the zone, they have the crab coming out. And with the crab coming out, they are able to just hold a little bit more longer, but we see for Lost Inkling like that they are able to just go in a little bit more aggro, non-capping the zone for the side of themselves. But no, because of the lockup, because of the pencil just in a perfect spot right now, they are able to just save the zone. Yeah, but, but you did see there, um, that I'd be able to get one before they were able to jump out that might. That might be huge. The Zuka coming out from the side of Los Inklings. Um, un un unable to get anything. That's two down on the side of 4 F-150 though. That's huge. That's a cap from the side of Los Inklings. And they get the person that was behind them. And suddenly they're set up here. They're trying to set up. They're, they're trying the shot. Able to push up here. Yeah, they're trying to shot so much. But honestly, the shot is going to be trading off by the tri but again, X-Man just plays so much good defense on the pencil, as they usually do, <laughs> as they are usually a pencil main now, but honestly, for side of right now, for the sort of side of F-150, they need to push up, because the because the time for Lost is going to be slowly doing on the two soft is going to go down, the crab is going to be popping up, the third down by Slug is going to be going to down as well, for so, for, so for the side of Lost Inklings, they are going to be stuck in the base right now, but for 4 F-150, they are just going to be pushing up ahead, the Zuka is also going to be Oh, got as well, they get killed. Yeah, but the, all this started, if you notice, Masa was able to get behind them there and pop their hammer on the zone, push, get it, getting one and pushing the rest of the back here. We see that, that, um, those strikes aren't able to cap though, but that is one down on each side here. That's all, almost two down. They were, the, the, um, 
uh, at 4 from 50, barely able to survive there. Josh able to back up. Hammy's trying to push them though. Uh, this is a cap from Los Inklings with a pen. It's so painting and capping his own bag. It's just the stall fest. Two down on the side of uh, Los Inklings, but they instantly respond because of that cooler. The crowd coming up on the side of 4 from 50. It feels like all the specials are coming out, and the zone is just going back and forth, back and forth on the side of both. Hammy going down. And so, and now it's looking like it's looking better for Ford F-150. It's looking gruesome for sure on the side of Ford F-150 as they are able to just capitalize so much on the side of the base. But I, I, I said gruesome for Ford F-150, didn't I? It's looking gruesome for the side of Lost Angle, but now I just don't bring down that because for the side of Ford F-150, they're uncapped the top, but for the side of Lost Angle, they're one down. And because of that, it's looking gruesome for them as they actually are able to be captured up. But for Lost Angle, they are just trying to Fight so much for the zone, about to pass, but we see Master Soul trying to go for the sneak right behind with the bush. Trying to go for the slush, but trying to go for the jump actually, which they actually do get. And because of that, with the last few seconds remaining, are they able to cap the zone? Yes, Ford F 150 is going to be basically securing the game now. 1 0. Unless I just get joked on. But as, as you say that, uh, Slug trying his hardest to cap, not able to do much. The jump coming in there may be able to do something that. There's three on the side of Los Angeles, but two of them go down. An unfortunate, unfortunate um, death from both of them as Ford F-150 picks up this first map. Trying to complete the curse to make the game more closer, honestly. <laughs> the first psychology is complicated the curse, but the honestly... Time, the only time a commentator's curse has ever been good. <laughs> Oh yes, only the time they make it close. It, it's the only time it's good. But yeah, Ford F-150 getting the first win on the map. So for Tower Control, being this game on Hackerfish Market. Oh my god. Uh, Lost Inklings? I, I know we see Slug on the shot. We, I know we see the double Sarcher from Teresa and I think that was Eagles. But uh, I know Slug can play Bowler. And he really likes to play bowler, and this is kind of a map that he that he would like to play bowler on. And definitely being tower control as well too, you can stay well on the tower with the bowler and just do Cody Bob to just basically go for a one shot kill with the bowler. And also Hammy or Hammy can go hydro as well, so that's gonna be good defense and combo with those two, honestly. I mean, yeah, uh, you talked about it. I'm sort of expecting a pretty pretty big like comp switch from the side of Los Inklings. They're able to play weapons here. Weapons that actually work here. But on this on the side of Ford F-150, you know, Pencil, I guess most Zookas being the meta here really doesn't help Hydra's. They're, Hydra's very slow and if you try and position Hydra on that top, you know, that top uh, snipe like glass area that most people call it, um, you know, that Zook is able, will be able to easily pick you off without any sort of, um, Without any sort of trade. Yeah, hundred percent, unfortunately. But it's depending on how you use the weapon, and how good you use the weapon, really. So for the side of Lost Clans, we saw also how this match played out before. They are able to battle against Ford F fifty, so that's the main thing. If they weren't able to fight, I guess then this would be a whole on sweep. But no, again, Lost Clans has been around for six years, but mostly their synergy has been going along for a long time, and since they've been coming back playing in lands and also just playing in tournaments once again. It's honestly seeing them battling against this kind of team. It's huge for them because this is new gen plus an old gen and the old gen is keeping up their slack. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, it's it's so cool to see teams like, like, like Whip Rays, like Los Inklings that just stick together for years, just through and through. Um, we see here uh, pretty much the same comp from the side of F Ford F-150. However, they do have that Octo Brush, um, which has the Zipcaster. Very good choice here. We see uh, pretty much the same comp on the side of Los Inklings as well. We see the the um, the range coming out and the Neo Machine, which has uh, which has Zuka. They're they're opting to keep the heavy though, which is a very interesting choice. The heavy coming out with the range blaster, that's gonna be double wave pick if you don't know about that. But on the side of 4 from 50, they have the order brush as well. So Masa is just gonna be double dipping on brush era, but also the side uh, the side lost they're double dipping on double slaughter comp. So this is gonna be interesting to see once again. But we see immediately how it's gonna play off. Slug is gonna be just aggroing 1v1 all the way to the side of 4 from 50, but getting 3 down on their favor but for the side of 4 from 50 they are able to capitalize to the first checkpoint soon enough the two slosher well the slosher and the landing going down by muscle's brush 
in the hands of their own blood. Joss is going to be coming up ahead, but getting cancelled up by Hammy. Gav is going to be killed up as well in the bottom half, but it's still for the fifth month. Well, for the F-150, just going to be still moving on with two jumps on the back. Yes, they're able to get slugged there. That's a huge pick, because that was by Tower. Another one going down, those three down on the side of Los Inklings. The last one, Hammy, trying their hardest to do whatever they can. They're unable to get anything. And um, 4F 150 is just setting up, trying to end this quickly. I mean, this is really a really dominant performance so far from the side of 4F 150. It's crazy dominant because, again, Master is able to just do whatever they want. The type of X Man is just able to do whatever they want, just being in perfect positions on the canopy and all of that, too. Just we see this Master again. Just killing off the bush, just killing off the slot, just killing off the spot like now. Just basically, this might be it. Yeah, this is looking to be a very bad spot here. They keep, they, 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 uh, Los Inklings has been pretty much two down the entire time here, but finally they're able to get something started here. Two down on the side of Ford F-150, the brush there, the having to back off, but X-Men on that pencil trying to keep whatever they can. They keep the positioning, they're able to get a trade and that's Josh on this on the splash there. Coming up huge, not able to get the jump there, but I don't think that matters. Equals going down. Uh the the range slug's able to get one. Slug is just trying to hide from that Zuka. They have the core, but they're surrounded. Two down on the side of those things. And Ford F-150 continuing to just push that tower into the spawn of those Inklings, trying to end this quickly. They really are trying to end this really as fast as possible. Ford F-150 really tried their best to just play super aggro, but because they knew they were just getting off one by one, that's going to be three down for the side of Los Angeles now, but honestly, no doubt to be about it, because Masa, the main bus slayer for the side of Ford F-150, is just trying their best to just move up all together. X-Man is on the left side with Josh, I think, on the left side as well, just joining up the clap, the crap in the special, and which they actually do. Oh my gosh, that's kind of funny. But Eagle is going to be on the left side, just trying to one with one Josh, which they are able to stay alive from. Somehow, Hammy is just going to be one with one Gav and actually Hammy does lose that to Gav, but but somehow on the left side that's still gonna be equal staying alive at trust us, but now they go down after a long time, but still the tower is going to decide for it from 50, not capitalized on the last checkpoint yet though. I mean Josh has just been able to stay over in that in that area for so long, getting so much value. Josh is still over there. They're cool. I'm pretty sure the close to crowd they have crowd. They're finally able to get Josh, but by then Masa and the rest of the team are behind them. How did they get back there? x man that's three down. It's just Hammy again. <laughs> the Zipcaster coming out. How did the entire team get behind the Los Inklings there? They finally learned about the sneak. That's what happened. And because of that, they were just able to hold on to suck still. And fit that for right now, Josh is still just setting up the crowd once again on the left side. If it's X-Men on the left side as well, Master on the left side too enough as well. Gav was going to be the tower of tower. But because they were tower riding, they get killed off by Hammy. They get killed off by the rest of the team of Los Angeles as well. Just like Teresa, but X-Men just getting a one shot, one kill to be the last of the bat. Hammy trying to go for the Zuka shot on top, but that's actually going to be, that's actually going to be Master going down. On the hands of Gav just went in front of him as well, but they're not going down as well. Gav is going to be pulling up Zuka as well. Trying to go for a 1v1 in any case of whatsoever, but Hammy is going to be on the right side trying to battle X-Man. The slot of Chief is just a pencil. Hammy's trying, their tower's not working in their favor, but they do get X-Man down. That's two down on the side of Ford F-150. The one on the tower goes down, it's a delayed three down. That is actually kind of huge. The, it granted, you know, Lost Inklings is in a situation where they need a they need to pull off an, a pretty much pull off a miracle and a half here to get to get um, the win as they go three down. It's looking to be over. Equals is trying their hardest. They go down. Slug is trying. Everyone is trying, but unfortunately, they were not able to get that tower going in time. Uh, Ford F one fifty getting a dominant two zero victory. Again, with the dominant victory going to the side of 4 from 50 from Group L, they are going to be right now in the standings of Hammerhead because they need to be battling Heaven's Reflection, which is going to be deciding the top seed. But for the side of Lost Inklings, they tried the best. Game one, honestly, it was a really close game. They could have done really well on that, but it's unfortunate how it played off to the last second. But honestly, for game two, it just showed dominance 
on how strong for the 150 is once they are in the group which they are definitely in now and because of that they are going to be moving on battling Kevin's reflection which is going to be a close seat but also for lost like for the pistol Peel Cats tryouts, Pie Cats tryouts, which is going to be C38 for C41. They're going to be fighting for Mako and Lantern Bracket. I mean, what a, I mean, what a performance from the side of Ford F150. I, I, I expected to see something coming out of them, but just, just the, the visual of seeing one person turn around from those Inklings and, and three people from from Ford F150 just sitting there waiting for the other team it, it's just i i have no words for that oh yeah it's lo it's basically speechless but you know it had to happen sometimes but now we're going to be moving on to round three while at the bat we are going to be going to the room but now that we have a little bit of time as uh, the room is going to be setting up now let's actually try to talk about the land that's going to be coming up in may momocon yeah, Momocon is it going to be a land happening in Atlanta, Georgia on May on May from May 26th, 24th to 26th. Uh it'll be it'll be it is the largest anime convention in the Southeast US. There's panels for anime, games, comics, and more, a huge vendor and artist rally, and an overnight cabinet arcade access. Which is, you know, if you want to get your games in, you can. There's also gonna be like like we said, a Splatoon tournament there. I'm pretty sure there's a There is a pool for that. There... I have to check there my is. facts there. But... There is a prize pool. There is. What's the prize pool again? <laughs> the prize pool is going to be is predetermined, but there is a thousand plus prize pool so far because we have added for Splatoon 3. But also, if it there might be a little graphic uh, for the stream, uh, I don't know if should that could be showing or not. But I'm guessing not for right now. But if you want to know. Uh, for anybody that's coming up, there is actually some players, I think, from Ford F50 is going to be going on there uh, for MumbleCon, but also it's run by Seacan, uh, if you know known player, run from comp, but now they try to do TOing. But again, for the Atlanta scene, if you want to sign up, go to SartoGG slash tournament slash MumbleCon, or go to MumbleCon.com to go buy a con passes and sign up for Splatoon. I'll just sign up for the Splatoon land server, but join the Discord. <laughs> because that's where you get all the info for any Splatoon land, just like what's going up in May as well, a week before LTC. Yeah, um, LTC is one of probably one of the, if not the biggest uh, Splatoon lands currently. Um, granted, I think MomoCon is going to get close and Riptide later this year will probably have a lot of people there as well. But LTC is coming up Mother's Day weekend. Um, LTC is, is one of the, is down in Round Rock, Texas at the Kalahari. It's, it's one of the, uh, like I said, one of the biggest Splatoon 3 lands currently. Um, lots of, lots of big teams there, Starburst, Moonlight, um, and this is also going to be the final LTC happening. Uh, so get, you pass this today, compete if you want to, if you can, make the trip down to Round Rock. You're going to. There's going to be a lot of uh, familiar faces, a lot of top players there. Like I said, Moonlight, Starburst, a bunch of other people. You'll be able to interact with the Splatoon community and just have overall have a good time. We are beating three. We are beating Smash by three attendance for LTC right now. But also one tournament that we should mention before, uh, it, since we're on the train, we should mention Big Dab before coming up this weekend, this Sunday actually. Like, Oh god, uh, LTC, uh, no, Big Dab before, coming up this weekend, in the New York area, in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York, which actually, two teams in this, in this SMS is playing this Sunday for Big Dab before as well, Very Good Calamari is C CH2O. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, we have lots of lands coming up in the upcoming months, but getting back on track to, you know, the tournament at hand right now. Up next, we have R R R Remix versus High Point. I think that's how you say it. I hope I didn't sound dumb saying that. Um, as we get into Clamblitz, Manta Maria. Yeah, we 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 Remix. That is how you say it. There's so many Remix names for some reason. But I don't know why. Uh, this is the this is the low team, uh, coached by Skep, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, and that's all I know about them. They are basically in the Div 6 level, I think. Around that level. Uh, and maybe lasted for a year. High point. Full on pickup. It, that, that's all I can say. They're just a full on pickup. <laughs> Good to know. You know more about these teams than me. <laughs> well, but yeah, anyways, because we had that information, let's move on to the maps real quick. Because we are going to be going to the match like really quickly. So we're just going to be driving, buying masks, climbing this map that we are talking to ink blood, 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 ruins. I mean, like you said, Clamblitz Inkpl- or Clamblitz Manta Maria. Got my maps and modes mixed up there. Clamblitz Manta Maria. Very interesting, um, um, choice here. It's, um, god, I'm, I'm not- I haven't really seen much Clamblitz Manta Maria gameplay in the competitive scene, so I can't really comment on it. But I know that it's, um, it's definitely- it's- it's harder- it's hard to push on this map, from my experience. It's hard to push, just like Clamblitz on- Manta Maria. Oh, no, 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 just like Splash with Manta Maria, it's hard to play yeah. because you're fight because like you're fighting for the main Splash with Manta Maria, you're fighting for the you're fighting for the Catwalk and Clambus on Manta Maria. Well, that's the same thing for Dark Control to be fighting for the Catwalk. This map is just a battle of the wall. <laughs> but I yeah, mean, yeah. Um, as we get into it here, we see the the brush, the stamper, sploosh, and edit from the side of a Remix. Uh, and on the side of High Point, we see. Uh, custom e-leader, a dynamo, and two shots. A very, very interesting comp from the side of High Point. And look at that, High Point is not a pickup at all. They're an actual new team coming up on Unrevised 2, so this is going to be a low level versus low level for sure. But I'm going to see for the first kill from the dynamo, it's going to be killing, they're going to be killing off the bush. So for VV Remix, they're going to be one down for a little bit, but again, we've seen the hammer getting a double from the splooch right there too. They're just going to be getting off so much space though. Jake. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, well, um, <laughs> sorry there, uh, we do see, I mean, I I'm very interested in the, um, the Dynamo E-Leader comp, oh, pretty much double backline, um, it's a very, it's very interesting, though we see three down on the side of Remix, that's huge, but, uh, High Point has to figure out a way to get Clams, to boost, the, get that economy started, they have 12, they just need to make a ball, 18 now, but by the time they do make a ball, the rest of uh, Remix is going to be back in there. The core is able to come out. It's seven from the side, of, seven on uh, on uh, the on dust there. The uh, V shot, the hero shot specifically, I should say. Um, they have seven, but they're not able to find that last claim. The hammer's able to come out from the side of the days. They're able to get that last claim of the ball, but that is pretty much a target on their back for the hammer being able to stamp them, but they do get traded out. It's a very even, uh, even game so far. Honestly, got a question though, Jake. Were you spears at the side of Dynamo and just and just put all together and then brush all together too? Detail on the Okadot comps, fighting all together in one match. So it honestly makes sense why you are spears a little bit. But honestly, as you said, that this is just going to be eco match and a little and a little bit of a star fest too, because we, again, we are waiting for both sides to have one person, one team player go up and go to the base and they're waiting for a jump. They're just scared for that right now. That's what we're noticing right now. The spruits are going to go down. That's going to be three down on the side of Hyper VV Remix. They just need Clamps to push up. Toss is going to play super defense though, and canceling that push entirely. And showing why, why, what Dynamo is good at. It may be slow. It may be you know. It may be weak in the meta currently, but you can use it in ways that most people don't see. Like I said, you don't see Dynamo a lot, so. People don't really know its true power that you've seen in, in past games, you know. Uh, Dy the Dynamo is did jump back though, and Vasi barely able to survive that, barely able to get out of that. It's one down on the side of High Point. Remix has been really good so far on, while they haven't been able to get scores, they've been really good at keeping map control. As I say that though, three down from the side of Remix, and if you're if you're high point, you're trying to push this as much as possible. They do have the Kraken coming out from oh the sea leader, the Kraken cheese. Uh, that you know, it's it's Kraken cheese. <laughs> it finally happened. It took four minutes, and that's what we were waiting for both sides because they were playing so much defense. And because of that, we finally see Kraken cheese going in for the first goal after four minutes of gameplay. And we see for high point right now they are making the throw down short of 68. So that score is eh. They have basically one and three clams. 
to their favor right now, but again, we just need to see VB Remix push off, but they just need an economy. The RNG for them has not been to their favor that much, but they are just have been trying to go for good so much. But they are able to just secure mid for so long as well. If this was zones, VB Remix, Remix would have just secured this back already. But again, because this is clan blitz, we just need to see them go for RNG clan and push out together, which they do have enough clans for. That's oh. going to be dust though, lots of, lots of life though, and they just going to be going down. That, that's a huge pick on the on the um, on the stamper there. Uh, we do see that, like you said, remix has re -re remix has been really good at keeping map control. However, they haven't been able to facilitate pushes and get claims in. They don't have a crack in the you know do the crack and cheese strat, but they've been really good at keeping map control to you know and keeping tabs on that leader to not really like let them use that crack. And I that was like I said that was the first cracking we had seen all game, and they got it down to 68 here. One good push from the side of re Remix, and suddenly they, they're right back in it. They, they take lead. We see here, we get to the 30 minute mark. The brush is trying to get behind them. They do have the ball. Uh, the Zuka coming out barely, barely missing. That was a very good dodge. If we be in there, but I mean, they're in a weird spot here. BBB Mimics, they don't have a Kraken, but the Kraken is the hammer. But they were trying to push it so much as possible, but, but for right now, it might finally be the time as Lagoon is able to just punch it with the clam, but are they able to get so much going? And they have a pity clam as well. They could go for a jump if they are, but we see Lagoon just trying to put it for the last pity, and that's going to be it. High point is going to get the first point. And a crucial first point. Like I said, this is only best of three, so this win is just puts, puts them on set point already. And that's that's huge in in something like this. We saw there though, remix re -re remix did a really good job. Like I said, um, you know, keeping map control. Really, there was a lot of orange all over the place, and and uh, high point was just playing hard deep hard defense, and they were able to keep like it pretty much an impenetrable wall there until that that kraken came out, and they were able to get the score. Yeah, it turns out uh, the. The Dynamo was rotating on nothing for like four seconds. Um, okay, we love Nintendo. That might be a little bit like a ship, but that might be spec lag as well. So uh, we don't need to worry about that. Just uh, Manta Rio and Clambats in general, it, it's kind of like a weird map. So really, it, it's just a stuff as all the way to the end. But since High Point had the crack and cheese, they were just able to push it in and go in for a score, but because VV Remix had enough clams and RNG potential to go in, they were able to score one last lap at the end. But because of one clam, or two clams really, they weren't able to get the score because they got wiped out. But now for Dark Joy and Claude Art Academy, they have an open, they have more map. They have more space. What do you think would happen for VV Remix, Remix if they go off to the brush again? Okay. Don't know. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> great answer, I know. Um, <laughs> but with TC Inkblot, I mean, this is really about skill. This is, this is, uh, this is considered the Pokemon Stadium 2 from some people of Splatoon. TC Inkblot is just that map that you see everywhere. And I mean, both teams have probably had a, had enough practice and then some on this in this map mode. So, like I said, it really just comes down to skill and who can play this map better. Mm -hmm. Off the skill, who can play this map better, indeed, because this map layout, there is no middle. You see in the map preview on on screen right here. There's a middle. That middle is slashed. That's gone. Mm -hmm. There is gonna be stacks on the left side and right side that the backlines can go on which both teams do have, so it's going to be really good for them to set up on. But also the Dynamo, if you see that back up again, they are able to just keep on ledge farming and trying to go full on much paint on the statue and even on bats as well is possible as well. But Yeah, but I mean, I mean, with the, I think that honestly Dynamo isn't as good for that. If you want to try and poke ledges like that or like get control of a certain area, the other rollers are honest, are probably better honestly like i i wouldn't if, if anyone played it carbon deco would be a good choice I, <laughs> I, I i guess i can i guess i'm a good commentator's cursor uh we see the carbon deco coming out from free Re remix like i said we also see that wiper there which is a great show another great choice there a very a very aggressive comp from the side of Re Re remix the brush as well and the heavy deco with the kraken on the side of a high point we see the pencil we see the gold dynamo the 52 though and that hero shot the v shot we see the gold we see that gold dynamo going down 
But if you're that 52, y'all, you're trying to get... You're, you're really just trying to get picks. As I say that, they are able to get a pick. Yeah, and also what you say about the diamond, it's not going to be good for ledge farming. It is actually going to be good for ledge farming now because they have the gold diamond with chumps and a bomb. So they can ledge farm with bombs and they can actually just go for a lot of pain with the chumps as well. But also we have a pencil coming up for high point and we need this nut mode as well. The VV mix is not running cooler. So they're just going full blown aggro, no full on action as well. Just going straight to the face. As you see, again, as you said, the cracking on side of VV mix as well on heavy spotting. But we just see in general for right now that VV mix is able to go for this first checkpoint. Chumps are going to be going off inside the high bar. You see the Zuka just being funny, oh and the hammer getting a God double God. immediately from the wiper. Maybe a triple too, and now they do. They get the trip. They got the triple. What a triple from the hammer! Huge plays from the side of, of, of one hammer that we see the Zuka coming out, the brush coming out. The Dino is able to you know trade out the brush and they get one behind them. The carbon is going. The carbon going down, but. It's it's looking bad for this side of high point. They were able to stop that push, but the heavy was able to get jumps there from this. Uh, heavy was able to get jumps, but they do go down. And mid is is high point is completely taken over mid. The carbon's trying to do something. They're forced to jump back. Husk is set up in the per perfect spot with that gold dynamo. However, they do hop off in favor of getting on tower. Bats survived for like 50 seconds going for a 2v1 by the way, and they just lasted for that like I guess that, I guess, I think that was just char in the pencil, but true enough that was a good strategy for them. But for right now, we're seeing Hyper to try to push on the tower, but again, because of the distraction from we are not able to do as much as possible, they're about to play more defense instead. As you see, two down from the side of remix now, Callum? Callum on the pencil is just trying to press to go to side to stay alive. But again, playing defense while they are losing score right now, but there is a crack on the bottom left, so that makes sense. As the cooler is gonna be falling off, they do lose mid. So they are just gonna be waiting and waiting for the three down and just trying to push it from there. Yeah, they get they do get two down. Um, and Raze is and uh Lagoon are both in bad areas. Uh Lagoon is able to go or um Mage is able to get one there, and suddenly High Point's able to push it. That 52 out getting the picks that you know they need as as the sort of I guess the main Slayer weapon here of the group. They're able to pop that whale. Uh, the whale is able to catch on to. No, actually, the whale doesn't catch on to anybody there. We see Days there with the the uh, the carbon not able to get anything, but uh, High Point's only at that first check point. They're not able to get it. It's gonna be very close here. Uh, they're all around that first checkpoint, but they aren't able to get it. The heavy is able to push them back, and, and that first checkpoint not going down is huge for this side of Greenman. High five was fun to search as well, but well, the well, major judge creature as well, but also Brad just getting them twice now. So that's gonna be the main average just going down entirely. The Stuka is still alive, gonna be on the side of high point, but again, they're not pushing up with it as much as possible. They're just getting sold out every single time. We see what side of VB remakes, them just having bomb hell, it's still just getting them to the fence and making high point scared. Which you do not want to see for high point right now, but now they have two down. But the other side has two down as well. Brad's gonna go on with the Kraken, but the price is gonna be going up ahead with some more. The pencil's going down. Dust this is gonna be the last one live. But again, because of that, VV Remix has so much control, which high point cannot take advantage of anymore. Yeah, and high point also does not have the specials to start a push here. I mean, they don't have they, their 52 goes down, which is huge. But they don't have cooler. They're close to cooler. They're close to chumps. They're close to they're close to their specials, but they do not. They they now have them. They pop the they pop the cooler, um, and they're they're saving the rest of their specials here. They gotta push up. They use both the the chumps and the zuka here, trying to push them back. Um, they two down on the side of on the side of remix, but on the same thing two on the same side two down on on the side of the. On the side of High Point, Lagoon able to shark and get another one. That's a huge pick. There's just under 20 seconds left, and if you're if you're High Point, you've got to start a push here. You know Lagoon's behind you. You know the brush is behind you. They're able to pick it off, but they go down. They go two nine as well. The pencil and the 52. It's down to the V shot and the the, uh, the V oh. shot and the dynamo, but they aren't able to do anything. Re -re Remix able to bring this to a game three. There's the high point in the match once again, and because of that, they failed to reach the high point like last match. There's no cheats or anything. You just need to play full on defense. And mm -hmm. VB Remix just played so much aggro. 
it didn't care. And with that, we are moving on to a game three. Thoughts to mommy. One of the one of the few um dual zone maps here. Um, what, Jorion, what would you say is the key to winning this, this set in this map? Other than any of your mom, George, you could say about this map, it's really just what you need to do on the sides of BB Remix, and just go what you did before. They played super aggro and just kept it all together. And same with Clampus and Monty Mantaria, as mentioned before, they were just able to secure mid as much as possible, just the whole time. They were just playing on the wrong mode. So if they just kept what they did before, they definitely win this on the spot for a high point. They played aggro. They had a Kraken before in game one. Uh, even though it's not Clamplets, it's still a two zone map. And with Kraken, you can just circle around the whole map in one go. It's still a lot of pain. And enough pain with a little bit of an extra bomb to cap both zones if you can. So really, in a defensive state matter, which they wanted to go for for high point in game two, this is the point where you go for it. But for VV Remix, they had so much paint. This is the map for that as well. So it's going to be definitely equal for both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, you talked about the, the, the Kraken there. I mean, both of these zones are really small. And, and while Kraken does not paint that much, in the long run, with these small zones, if you're able to, you know, with with Kraken, you're able to, um, I guess, neutralize one zone at least. That's going to be something that's going to pull people, pull people away from the other zone and you're able to you know shift around it's pretty much a game of cat and mouse at that point when you when you neutralize one zone a hundred percent is just a game of cat and mouse which is makes it really annoying for both sides but if you have a brush like vvv remix has it's not going to be that much annoying because it gets just one to the other side one back one to the other side just basically be the actual mouse <laughs> in the cat yeah. and mouse battle and i mean you're also gonna pull if you're that brush you can pull everyone away from the rest of the team it's if you're a brush in this situation you want to you want to stick brush and you want to just run around but we do see a uh, very interesting uh, call from the side of Riri remix uh high point sticking with the same thing but uh, uh, carbon staying for days bossy on the neo machine rat on that bj and the b blob from bugs I, i'm just saying this is the time for Skeptical to be a favorite because we see it for VV Remix their presence in the match being the Blob Lover coming in play now. But the side of High Point, they're having to die moments to get from the chumps. So that's going to be a pain on the zone right once more. But again, for the side of Bugstab with the with the, with the the Blob Lover, they're having rain now. That's going to be a capitalized on one zone as much as possible right now, which does show enough as possible. But no, it doesn't because of the paint for the side of High Point, which they do have, and they are able to capitalize the zone. But the days, it's going to be just capitalizing and killing off the pencil, but they even slay respawn because of Cooler. But also right now, we just really see them being on the spot right now, just getting cut off by Mage. Yeah, and I mean, as much as I want to say that they, that, that, that the Remix is do is able to, will be able to like try something with this comp, they're very, they're definitely outmatched by the, the High Point comp, as High Point has, is, has uh you know all the meta weapons they have all the the paint they have paint i mean both teams have a lot of paint i'll, I'll admit that the back coming out from the side of re remix here that'll be huge that'll uh that'll be able they'll probably be able to cap the zone here um i guess re remix trying to prove uh me wrong here by trying to win this game with this very unconventional comp here so we see the zuka coming out from the side of high point they weren't able to get anything but they are able to cap the zone that's a huge cap Huge cap for sure because of what they have right now is just full control on right side. The diamond is going to go down, but that's going to be no chops and no extra pain as a ruler himself. But for right now, as the captain slides on his own once again, VV Mix is going to be down the jet, so that's going to be range dead so far. The stamp is going to be one running, and them going down, going down as well. The blobs are going to be alive though on the right side, and because of that, they are going to be capitalizing on the left side soon enough with the blob blubbles action. Just battling off on the left side, but battling tossed right now on the dynamo, just as they play in the defense on the left side as well. But because of that, being the distraction overall, BV Remix might not be able to capitalize on the left side, but maybe might capitalize on the right side. And, and I feel like this is where that game of cat and mouse starts, like we were talking about here. Um, but I mean, BV Remix is, has been able to keep that zone. Unfortunately, though, now they're unable to get. They lose one zone, oh. one goes down, but the Zuka coming out for days, able to get one, but that's all they're gonna get. They they wanted to try and make a play, but they weren't able to. It's, that's a cat from the side of High Point. That's a 
huge cap as well. Azuka coming out from the side of Dust, able to back go back off or keep uh, keep re 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 back off. That's two down from the Dynamo. The Dynamo showing its worth there as re as High Point able to cap and they're finally able to sort of push up here. Um, if you're re re remix in this situation, you're trying to play specials. They have the back. The blob is far away from that rain, which is the only thing that they can probably use for a, a, a switch here. As one goes, but the 52 does go down on the side of high point. Day is able to get one here. They have the Zuka. They're, if you're the Zuka here, you're trying to get multiple here. They're able to get one, not able to get two, but they do back away and back away uh, high point enough. However, they do high point able to come back. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. They're able to come back. They make it to the high point for sure in the match, making it up to 30 points. So that definitely is going to be a solid point for you guys right now. But made to try to be battling against a bug slap. But bug slap is going to be winning with that blob action right there. As we're going to be seeing them try to capitalize on the right zone. Two down inside the high point. On, going into the left zone. Three down going over the left zone as well. That's going to be fast, I think, as well. But fast eight with the sandwich is getting that triple right there for the help of the carbon if i remember correctly but because of that we are going to be seeing so much defense on baby relay just staying nearby the spinner but they just trying to sneak as well they're just going to be trying to handhold the zone as much as possible i mean that crab did go down there uh which is huge a letting letting uh letting high point get back in there um the back they're trying to do something not able to do anything though the zone flips for the side of high point they're able to to take control of the zone there's just under 30 seconds left there's no there's no really no time to try and paint for specials here as two goes down on the side of of a remix this is one of the down downsides of having a no cooler comp you're going to take it's going to take time to get back in there Vasi trying to get one trying to get uh anything with their Crab unable to do anything with 15 seconds left. It's now or never for this side of Re Remix. They have to go in and have to get something. But the blob goes down on the side of Re Remix. That's huge. That's a big. That's one of their biggest pains. Uh, Vasi trying to do something. They're able to neutralize this all, but they have to Aww. cap it, and they're unable to. High point able to survive and win that set. Not capitalizing that zone last second. It's definitely unfortunate for Re Remix. They had so much power, they had so much control, but in the last second when they were just getting slowly wiped out one by one, the pressure going on the back, they just need to fall back, but they fall back a little bit too far, and High Point was just able to just, just make it to the peak, and just hold on to much, much potential, uh, as much potential they needed, and also having the puzzle and the Dynamo in good spots too, so they were just able to hold on tight and get, make it to the win. I feel like honestly that was just kind of like a comp diff really I hate I hate to I hate to boil it down to that but it really was you have a lot of unconventional picks from the side of your remix I mean they they had they had something cooking there but you have no cooler your your longest range is really a jet which you know as much as jet you know jet has value realistically you would you would probably pick CJ over um, C CJ over DJ in this situation because back isn't as useful on zones. I mean, yeah, it's good for capping zone, but on a dual zone map like this, you don't really get much value from that back because what you neutralize one zone, then you have to swim around, go to the other zone. Back's not the most. It's, it doesn't get good use when you're trying to play retake. It gets good use when you're already like when you have the zone capped already and you use the back to keep the defending team from retaking and pushing them back. I think that blob was a nice idea, but I mean, they had no cooler. They had, again, the, the beach jet. I really think that going into the, that, it was, it was, it was a very awkward situation. The thing is, they think, think about it like this way though. They try, they just, they have, they have so much blood in their hands. They just want to get more blood in their hands. They were just, they were just trying to go for kills. Think about it in that favor, though. Yeah, but I mean, they still had the lack of cooler. I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing here is that they, they had no cooler. With blah, I guess with with carbon specifically, you carbon. I mean, they had the stamper. Realistically, you want a cooler there for those two to be able to, if they both if they go down specifically, like if you're playing crap, add and stuff, 
you go down, you want to be able to respawn quickly and still have that crab for retake. If you die while you're in crab, which we saw happen multiple times, you lose that crab and, and you're in a situation where you have to you have to get it back. And when it comes down to it, having no cooler doesn't allow that carbon to push in without any like without any like sort of uh, repercussions because they they were forced to you know play it a little safer and not go in as much which you know you want to see a carbon go in and try and get behind the opponents that is unfortunately the truth about the cooler meta but sometimes you just want to play fun and it just plays super aggro just like splatoon 1 which have unfortunately died recently as of two days ago so rip, rip splatoon 1 they, they were just trying to play like Splatoon 1 when the cooler didn't exist and you were able to just go ham and just kill everyone as much as possible with your own weapons and blood of hands. But because of the cooler meta, yeah, mm -hmm. you had to go that way and high point just makes it to go for a kind of weapon cop death. But that is Splatoon 3 for ya. But yeah, now we're going to be moving on to Top Cut, which we are going to be seeing a lot of more cooler and a lot of the same old consoles to yeah. get one or more. more. So, I mean... Sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine. Uh, that, 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 was, that's really it. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, yeah, we were gonna when, when it comes to top cut here, especially ham like like the top like top brackets, you'll see a lot of the more meta comps. You'll see shot, you'll see cooler, you'll see kraken and, and clams, a lot of these things um that you would see in more more high level and I guess even sometimes in top level. Um but yeah, like you talked about it seeing you'll see more cooler here you'll see most likely we will have a cooler in pretty much every team yep it's the high level or top level maybe no what we need the one at this point it's just mm -hmm. going to be the same old thing but again it's all going to be based off mechanics now and, and again you know, we have to mention this up again if you want to just try to hop out the scene and try to figure out what the problems is and maybe the new thing of weapon and restriction, weapon restrictions, all that, bail out the form from the TO's guild because that is going to be helping all these tournaments and all that figure out which one would make the game balanced and not having the most complaint about another cooler matter, another crack and cheese. Fill out that form because your voices matter in this whole thing. TO's, players, and commentators alike. All of us yeah, matter. Yeah, if you want, if you want to fill out that form, um, go on to Twitter and go to at Splatoon TO Guild or Splatoon Tournament Organizers Guild on Twitter. Their latest post is that, that doc, the, that, that, you know, that, that form you were talking about, fill it out, try and see, try and see like what you want and try it. Cause, cause your input matters low level to high level, you know, um, just fill it out, see what you want. And, and we'll, and you know, then the rest of the, the, the TOs will We'll see the results and choose from there. It's a it's a very smart way to get your voice heard and to help out the competitive scene to make it healthier and stronger for uh, a longer time. If we could get a link of that in chat, I thank you, Toma, <laughs> for that in chat. Toma yeah, on it, like like copy and pasting it immediately. <laughs> yep. And... W Toma. Yeah, honestly, and W Grace, Top Dog, and W Win, who's streaming right now, and the rest of the O's right now for SOS. But as of right now, we yapped on for too much. Let's go on break. Yeah, we have Top Cup coming out next. Yep.
and welcome back to SOS 144. Again, that is <laughs> the, the square root of 144 is 12. Uh, this is now an educational stream. Welcome to uh, SOS math. Um, <laughs> but aside from that, we are we are getting ready for top cut here. Um, this first set is going to be best of three against the team. The first team, um, we are just gonna we are just gonna simply call it Yippee, because um, it looks like the Yippee guy. Uh, it has Mar, Lucas, Fishy, uh, Didi, a bunch of a bunch of well-known players versus 11. 11, make a wish. Uh, I'm Jake, and I'm here with Joram. Yeah, I'm here too. Hi. Uh, so Yippee, aka Happy, Happy, Happy Thumbs, aka and Mordecai is pressing a, a happy face with two thumbs up versus 11 11 make a wish if you if you want the full explanation of these two names uh happy feet happy thumbs aka yippee aka happy Mordecai thumbs is ks Wild lucas fishy dd you might recognize the names because three of them well four of them is from xoxo and one of them and two of them is pickups uh, if you recognize lucas they are just they are that spruce player by the way, so you might see some spruce action if they do play. Well, I'm talking about Jeff, but if they do play, but they most likely are not playing because they're crossed out on Sunday. But everyone else, they are just people who usually play as usual. But Lucas is going to be the only sub there. I love, I love, and make a wish. They've been around for a while. They're in Div 3, Div 3 level, Div 2 level. Uh, I, I think they have already on their team, but at the same time, I think that one left. And they had made a different super team for that, but 11 11 make a rush off, it's still a really strong team overall. That's why they were in great fight. Yeah, um, and our first stage here, uh, g getting to the maps here, our first stage is going to be uh, Inkblot Clan Blitz. Uh, then we move into Tower Control of Manta, and if we do make it to that third game, we will see Splat Zone Tacklefish. What are, you, what are your thoughts on, on this, like, this map list? Saw this map list. We saw we saw Inkblot before. We saw Tower Control before. We saw Splatoon before. We saw Hagglefish. We saw Hagglefish before. We all we saw all this map before. TC and Clamplets. These are the unfavorable picks, like the unorthodox picks for map pools lately. But we always see Splats on Hagglefish like every single time. It's basically the yeah. decision maker for both map modes. But seeing Clamplets and Inkblot and Tower Control meant to be a basically shows how much power in defense both teams have mm -hmm. i mean yeah i i really couldn't agree more um like but you talked about hagglefish zones it is um hagglefish in general is a map that we've seen a lot since the start of splatoon 3 and i mean it's it's definitely very even it's a very even map mode it's definitely it feels like it doesn't feel like lockout heavy v i guess in a way um it's but it's definitely a big it's sorry go ahead it's 100 percent pick weight and stuff like trying up and stuff like screen junction i mean it's that for a reason but i mean getting into a clam clam blitz ink blot here um it it's definitely definitely a big thing to note is that that mid section is again it's not there unlike in the other map modes like we saw with tc ink blot that middle section is out as and and replaced with uh two stacks on this on left and right that is pretty much the same layout for clan blitz inkbot however on inkbot they do have a ramp that's replacing that little block on the right side right under that ledge that makes it easier to push into their that makes it easier to push the clam basket and in this situation with inkbot inkblot clams um I, I think really the clam economy is the biggest the biggest thing you have to keep track of if you can keep your keep enough clams to score, have a good push and i guess you know have specials ready when you want to push then you're set as long as you can just you know diff the other team <laughs> yeah and talk about diffing another team because the clam economy this time is sparse it's not as close together as a lot of maps that we saw before previously in the stream it's more spaced out so you need to one more every single type of clan but as we see as we go into the match four Happy Thumbs, aka Yippee and 11-11 make a wish, we are going to be seeing the shop, pencil, crack and cheese, and slosher, and for the other side, we are going to be seeing double sword, we are going to be seeing the edit, and we are going to see the tweezer, a new auto, an auto that's caught for 11-11 make a wish, it's honestly, it's pretty cool to see once again. 
Yeah, I mean the squeezer, the Zuka with the double, double sword. I think that combos really well. Uh, we do see the Kraken. She's from the side of of uh, Yippy, aka Happy Thumbs, aka whatever else you want to call it. <laughs> uh, we see the Zuka coming out from them here. As we see, uh, we see they they're able to get a lot of mid control, but they really don't have that big of, of a clam economy. They have 15, but they don't don't have a ball here. The Zipcaster is is um is coming out from the side of Make a Wish here. Not able to get any. Actually, they are able to trade out there, getting one. But and the, the stamp is able to get, get behind them. They aren't able to get anything. I don't think the Kraken coming out saving themselves. The pet, trying to just blunt blood force trauma. The pencil there, the Kraken. But they do uh, force uh, you need to use those that Kraken and not be able to cheat. Is it here? They have a ball, but they are two down here. Yeah, with them going two down, it's going, it's going, to, it's going to be a lot of a bit of a rush favor, but mostly a more patient game for the side of 11 11 making rush right now. As we see for Happy Thumbs, aka Yippee, what they have right now is the ball. They have strike something up right now. They have secure mid, but they're trying to fight off for the soil on the right side. But they kill off Candy, they kill off the edit, the scree the shot is going to go down. So they have a lot of control for mid right now. They need to control for the ramp, which they might have as well because the other soil is going to go down. But Kabi on the Zuka on the top right, just going to go full action, but they get a sneak on Candy. Which actually, to their favorite, that's going to be really good. But the hammer coming over again, but the Kraken cheesing a kill. Maybe it might be happening, but no, DD's going to go down. Oh. And the Kraken is just going to be staying alive as much as possible. Battling against the sword, and the sword is actually going to be winning in that one v one. Nope, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Fitch is going to be winning <laughs> that one v one. I mean, the the thing about Make a Wish is they've been doing really good at. at... They are able to just get in with regular jumps and get that score. However, they don't really, they aren't really able to push up more. They aren't really able to get a, a follow up to that push as much as they want to try here. So that's really a dead push and a free power clamp for the side of Make a Wish. Now it's just up to them to try and, you know, get picks and try and get that score going. Yeah, they just need to get the score going with the ball that you only have by now. They have a cooler up ready. They have tries going against them as easy on the sausage, just trying to be pointing them out. On the right side, battling against Kabi on the screen, but it's going to be a trade off a little bit, so that's going to be unfortunate for them. But, but we're going to be seeing in the mid. That's going to be Candy just again trying to battle the defensive, but the pencil winning that off. And it's just going to be the last one live. But trying the best to be alive on the right side, battling against Fishy, but no, that's going to be a death to them. Fishy again having two clubs off to get full ball, but Candy trying to die up, but no, again, Fishy. She coming clutch and staying alive, but I guess Azuka is not going to be anything alive though. Yeah, Whatever. but Azuka is huge. That gets rid of, like we said, that crack and cheese, which is huge in a lot of situations. Again, Make a Wish doing so good at neutralizing the crack and cheese. This is probably one of the best. This is one of the best, um, like teams being able to diff the crack and cheese I've seen in a while. They're trying to make a ball. They're close to one. They have a clan economy to make one, they just have to push up. They have the ball there. The strikes coming out and the, sh the strikes and the cracking coming out from the side of Yippee. They're trying to just push back, make a wish, but they aren't able to. The jumps coming in from the side of, of make a wish, they're able to get the ball in. Will they be able to get the lead here? They are able to get the lead here. That's a huge lead with just over a minute left in the game. And, and the crack with how well they've been dealing with the cracking cheese, I they could realistically have a good chance of winning this. It is a good chance for them to win this as they win off the bad score, so that's going to be a really underdog way that they can score. But really, for right now, what they have right now for the side of Happy Thumbs, aka what they have for the side of Yippee, they have a ball. They have seven clamps. They can just easily KO this off the bat, really, with that one clamp. But honestly, right now, with them going two down, they're just vacantly losing so much defense at the last one. We see 11 11 makes it. Make a wish going in for another score and that's gonna be a lot comes to the favor. They were just playing the patient game to go in for the lead. I mean, make a wish is playing this like as good as you can get here. They're they're punishing Kraken. They're punishing the 96 for before they can crack and they're getting scores and they're getting three down. They're two down. Unfortunately, make a wish is two down here and and there's so many clamps that the ball goes down on the side. Uh, the ball goes down on the side of um of uh. Yippee, they do have, they do, they are managing to get it. The Kraken isn't out yet. The Kraken is close. The Kraken is close. We're getting down to overtime. It's very close here. Um, but I don't think these two balls will be able to make it. One ball goes down. There's three balls on the side of, of, uh, of they, Yippee, but they, they get it. two. They jump two. 
Uh, they're able to get the Kraken Cheese, but that's still not enough. They only have eight clams. That ball is trying to get in there. It will get in there, and they will take the lead right at the end using the Kraken Cheese. They didn't use the Kraken Cheese for that third power, power climb. They had to uh, brute force that last one it over to the basket to be able to get it in. And I, a great comeback victory for the side of Yippee Thumbs. Yeah, they, they crack and cheesed for the first two, and then the slosher was still alive on the crack and cheese. And because the slosher was alive on the crack and cheese on the bottom of the bottom of the screen, they were just able to swim up and go with the pity. That's what happened. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I mean, as much as you know, people don't like crack and cheese. I'm included. Um, it, it gets it gets wins. It gets people's. It's it's a strategy that you want to use if you're trying to win you know um but yeah we're going into it uh tc manta uh jordan what can you say about this map talk show manta there is no cracking cheese in here but there's cracking fence but there's no cracking cheese here but also the funny thing as well too uh talking about the last match the whole game basically wrapped up in a minute the first four minutes were just filler if you talk about like an anime arc again like we said in a previous set <laughs> It was four minutes of filler, and then the last minute was just full on action. That was the whole game for Clampets, and I think Clampets in general now. I'm but gonna, I'm gonna make some people mad here, but that's pretty much just One Piece. <laughs> GG, GG's well played. But otherwise, talk to Amanda Maria. It is again gonna be one of those maps that you have to stall in for a little bit, basically going in for the going in into the catwalk area where there is a checkpoint but basically you'll be getting cracking cheese uh, not cracking cheese you're gonna get cracking defended on or zuga killed on or even shrike killed on because that's coming back into the middle we have dd on the start being able to do that but for the rest of the team like for the side of 11 11 make a rush they have the zip castle they have the hammer they could just hit the tower as well because the tower is going to be smaller than usual we have pretty much the same comps here i mean realistically the only switch is D on that slosher and I actually kind of like the Kraken pick here because the Kraken's able to you know stay on tower and make it so that it's it's a way it's a way for the other team to not be able to go on tower we do see candy though getting that early flank are they able to get anybody it doesn't look like that they're just going down but the uh the edit there is playing very aggressively they're they're unfortunately two down on the side of uh of 11 11 11 to make a wish uh, make wish is the blue team, but Aang oh. able to get three. What a play from Aang! Wow. 11 11 make a wish immediately, but with Aang, this Shuko is coming in with a triple. Almost getting the quad earlier, too, but because Vichy had a lot that actually denied the quad. But for right now, we're seeing 11 11 make a wish. Just passing the first check by immediately. Fishy to try the best with the crisis to stay alive and play some of the defense, but it's not going to work out really well because there is Benno. On the Zipcaster, getting killed with the Zipcaster and itself? That's a wow, that's a 100% chance right there. But because of that, they are able to move on to the second checkpoint. And that's a big second checkpoint. D is able to get them off the tower with those strikes. But that's still a huge play. And I mean, the momentum right now is on Make-A-Wish. They play, they're playing so good. They're having, they're, it seems like they can do no wrong. One going down from the side of Make a Wish. Another one potentially. Yeah, both of those uh those Splatanas going down. That's gonna force the rest of the backup. There is a jump on mid. They're able to get the pick before they can get the trade. That's two down. Fishy's in a bad spot. The jump is coming in. The crack is coming in to save the jump. What a oh. play from Fishy using that crack in to save the jump. The crack is now gonna come up on the tower. Aang is just sitting there. It was a standoff with a tower in between them. And I mean Make a wish is doing a really good job of just keeping control and, and and forcing I guess forcing make a wish or forcing uh uh Yippie to use their specials to no effect. Aang getting another one. Aang has been so crucial in this game so far. Trying to get another where they get one, maybe two hits, but they're forced to back away. They got away from the pencil. If they were getting killed by the pencil that was gonna be no good for the side level of make a wish, but because I aim just barely making it out alive out of the out of the range on the pencil. They were able to escape before right now they just play solid defense as we just going to be seeing full edit gameplay boys. As we see right now as we saw over to the, the on the regular structure, not the order structure anymore. But they are going to be playing defense on the bunker this time. Just trying to stay alive and trying to go in with the strikes as well. But really that's gonna be going for the second drop but as they finish the first checkpoint by now. 
Yeah, and this is the big push that, that Yippy wanted. They're going to get to that second checkpoint. They're going to be able to get the lead here, but it's not going to be a big lead unless they don't. They get the pencil. Two on tower there. Um, They were able to get people off tower, but D is able to get that trade. That's a very good trade. That's two down on the side of Make-A-Wish, and suddenly the tides have turned. The tides have turned three down for Make-A-Wish. Aang has to make some magic happen here to be able to keep... To be able to, you know, stay alive here, unable to do anything, and this is going to be a big push for the side of uh, Yippee. Yeah, the, yeah, from the sneak, the Yippee Happy Thumbs had on the side, on um, the right side actually, I, also with the help of Fishy, but in general, as we see again, Didi's trying to stick on the right side, trying to best, but they get failed off because 11 11 Big Rush finally found it out, but now they are trying to sneak up ahead, Candy getting the first kill, Candy getting a second kill, Candy trying to go for a third kill, but get denied by Fishy, but who's still in cracking right now, so they are playing police super 50 defense, but they're not able to get anyone though, it's a shocker right now, as they get killed up instead, but now we're going to see 11 11 Big Rush trying to go for the second checkpoint, which they need they killed that off and also got a little bit more points so they can get leave us again but now because the three killed on the knights is gone together they are going to be just basically the push is going to end now dd just getting another kill right yeah, I mean, the back yeah i mean d's doing really good here and i mean in the case of make a wish you as much as you you want to try and rush it i think you had in that situation you had a little bit of time to try and get space and stuff before you push but now you're in a situation where you're forced to push up uh, but Make-A-Wish is going two down, Aang again, the, the, trying to do something, someone jumped to them, unfortunately, Candy unfortunately jumped to them, they're able to keep going, they're able to stay alive, I don't know how Candy is staying alive here, how when, how did, how did you get away with that Candy, Candy, you, uh, you smooth criminal Candy, but they uh... unfortunately do go down to bomb there, uh, however, 20 seconds left, that's a huge, that, that was, that was a good distraction from the side of of, of uh, candy, but that well, they weren't able to capitalize off of that. Two going down the, from the side of Make Wish. It looks to be about about over here. Candy staying alive, finally going down. The Zipcaster is not going to be able to do anything. Oh. The GG strikes. The GG Zuka. Every special under the book coming out. The hammer is trying to do whatever it can, but it cannot one v one a Kraken. Uh, Yippee Happy Thumbs able to take it 2-0. It was really close, but again, in the last 45 seconds of the match, all the action came into came to play as we saw Happy Thumbs go all the way past the shack money, going down to 47, and then at the last few moments as well, 11 11 make they having this question come into play, but they get cancelled off by Didi, who had a slosher gameplay mode, but getting getting a bomb kill, getting another kill right after that, and then just Candy coming in for the jump, but barely making it all alive, but also just being the distraction at that point the whole time, just making everyone move around in mid for the side of Yippee Happy Thorns. But because of that, 11 11 make a wish didn't have much time, and they were just fighting up for the tower at the last moment, because at the last moment, they were needed to fight off the Kraken, and that Kraken, they, it is just a like a little actual shit point because after that single moment and because the tower control rules, if your feet is on the tower, you win. And that's how happy thumbs your feet won. Because the yeah. feet was on the tower because of fishy. I mean I, I want I just want to point out again, Candy they they were in such a terrible position there towards the end getting they, they had three people around them. They had jumped in. I mean yeah they had stealth jump but they were able to get out of that and get behind the opponents. I I, I need to know how they managed to survive that. Unfortunately, they, they didn't get much value as they went down to a bomb a couple seconds later. But being able to survive for that long with three people around you is still crazy. That's why I put game for you, AJ. That's why I put game play for you. I don't, I don't play Wiper if you couldn't tell. <laughs> yep. But yeah, now with that, that's going to be round one cell off the back. Yippee, yippee, happy thumbs. Moving on to round two, and they will be battling C2. Which is English or French, whatever that is. But yeah, that's gonna be it for us though, because that is gonna be our set. So, Jake, what about your socials? Where can you uh, find found anywhere in the world? I words. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch at JakeBoot0. You can also find me lurking around the Splatoon 3 category. Jordan, where can these lovely viewers find you? Yeah, join put you on Twitter underneath, uh, join Blue Sky, uh, I, I'm on Twitter, yeah, like and stuff, and also at the same time, I'll be sure you put, uh, double production sometimes, but also, you'll be seeing me and some other teams or players from here at Big Double for this Sunday, so, 
Yeah. Welcome everybody to Swimmer Sync 144. Another weekly edition of SOS is ready to go. My name is Kion. I'm joined by Broken Pinky. Or we resume. Broken Pinky, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Kion. Yeah, um, we are here at SOS 144 uh, during this great month of April. A lot of exciting things for Splatoon coming up in the near future. We obviously have worlds that are happening very soon. Uh, big lands happening in the near future, but for now, we have, you know, our nice little fun weeklies in SOS, and we are in the top cut of uh, Great White Bracket. Now in the top eight segment of it, we have Denny's Regulars versus Splat is Bronze. Yeah, Denny's Regular versus Splat is Bronze. Now, I have a lot of questions about the Fraud Watch for Splat is Bronze, but we'll leave that for another another time here. I've seen um, variations of, Denny, of Denny's Re Regulars there. I always feel, feel like I've, see, I've seen this group with uh, variations of, many, of uh, Denny's different names, but we, there, of course, they have Kubia, Hermit, Gray, and Typhlo have, see, uh, have casted this, this group a bunch. On the other side, um, on the other side for Splatter's Bronze pickup team, of course, with um, I'm just gonna refer to them as question mark, question mark. Uh, Splat, Splat, Captain Happy, of oh, Splat, of course, Captain Happy and Koya. Uh, ver variety members from Sea Bunny Plush and Sunset, according to Sendo Bio. Should be a fun one coming up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's why that's what always has a bunch of fun ones, and it looks like we're gonna be oh, starting yeah. things off on a. An absolute classic map mode of this game. I don't really know how else to describe it other than that. It's going to be starting on Zones Mako Mart. 
Yeah, zones make make Mart will be will be a lot will be pretty much your standard pick. You get to see it a lot. You get to see it everywhere you go. I want to see how Denny's regular and Splatter's Bronze gets to um, d deal with this map alone. Whether they want to try, tr whether they want to try something cool or they go, go back to what has worked well for this group. Um, but I'm gonna be ex I'm gonna be ex excited to see how this one works off. Denny's regular just fresh off of a two uh, one setting against their previous uh, opponent here. Um, and, and Splash Bronze got get, going off of the two zero um, for this one, so this could be uh, this could be this could be a lot of fun co coming up here, Pinky. Yeah, I mean, both these teams have that you know bit of momentum. They both played round one. They both won their sets. Uh, obviously, uh, I believe Splash Bronze had a bit of an easier time versus Heaven's Reflection, but um, both these teams does, does you know a little bit of wind in their sails. They just came off of a good win, uh, and now they're ready to take on each other. As you know, we're now in the top eight stage of uh you know great white here when you get when you move on losing you're out at fifth uh and i'm sure both these teams would love to win this best of three series and move, move it on to semi-finals uh if possible i mean i mean the goal of course at least make it to semi-finals in any weekly tournament whether it's sos or any or any other tournament's always going to be a very exciting time here now of co course uh we're, of course both teams kind of just get, getting lobby set up just trying to get trying to get all um all things settled away so while we are waiting for that um yeah as you mentioned great month of april coming up here with as you mentioned worlds tons of lands uh c coming up here but, um and we and we do have a land that we will be plugging up here soon but we will be talking about that later on as we have just we are just getting received word that uh webs are being picked so before we get to that point there just just want to let you know this is of course round two uh winner of this one of course moving on to semifinals and then loser gets eliminated but of course as you mentioned just just trying to just trying to finish uh top um, at the top, not not a bad sign as both teams just trying to get themselves settled in. Yeah, and I mean, I know if you've been watching this tournament, you've been seeing a lot of, you know, play all three, best of three series, whatnot, but this is going to be the last best of three that you're going to see for this tournament. The last two sets uh, after this one are going to be in best of five, so a little bit longer. This is kind of seen as like, you know, a bit of an appetizer to wean us into the actual, you know, more climactic matches of uh, this tournament, but this is still going to be a strong match, nonetheless, between two very solid teams. Oh, uh Oh, yeah, for sure, and I and, and hey, ex excited to see you with both these teams uh, um, are feeling. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious though, from from your perspective with uh, ma with make hard zones, you could we could probably be expecting a lot of the usual suspects here with pro with probably a variety of Clure and, and Trizugas. Me personally, coming into uh, these SOS weeklies, I want to see a little. Just want to see a little bit of, of uh, different things here as, as we are now finally in. Um, for this one, Danny's regular on the alpha side will be the teal colored side. On, on the other side of Splat is bronze, going to be on your orange color. Well, Pencil does make their appearance with the Nautilus for Splat is bronze. And, but on the other side, we got Kubia on the, 90, the 96 scale deco with the Kraken, of course. Hermit, of course, on their brush as, as per the norm. The cooler weapon, of, cor of course, being the tri -Nouveau. Going to be a very fascinating comp that Denny's regular is, um, is dishing out here. Yeah, I mean, Kion, you asked for a cool comp, and uh, Denny's regular is definitely uh, fulfilling that here. No, none of these weapons are really, you know, big in the meta, especially if you like that heavy deco. Uh, it's kind of an eyebrow racer, but all these weapons don't make sense. They are very strong on this map, but Spot is Bronze is a very, you know, straightforward comp. Uh, a lot of just strong stuff building on top of each other, and that's going to let them get that early advantage, but Hermit is on the zone. Perennial Barge player is going to go down, though, and that's going to be pretty solid for Spot is Bronze here. They have a good amount of control in the zone. Uh, Denny's Regulars is still fighting them here, but the control is in favor of Spot is Bronze, at least for now. Yep, at least for now. It always worth a I'd like to mention there that both teams kind of just resting through the zone um so, so to speak but as you, but as you mentioned per, i love different varieties of course in every, in every weekly denny's regular though they're going to actually a little bit more comfort i have casted he turns four with permit permit has always the the vault of twinning crush of some variety no surprise that herbert is dishing it out here of course kubia with 96 gal deco almost a very uh almost one of their picks that, that they're very familiar with so almost comfort for the most part from denny's regulars and as Bron, as, as you've alluded to before, going with your with your standard um, snipe rider, you know, the splash and the trizuga, um, the boot. Both teams again, no no true control of the zone quite yet. We do see the zones training left and right, left and right. Uh, so far, there's currently a two down situation for Splat is bronze. It should lead to Danny's regular at least getting the zones for a few moments there. They did go, they did lose two of their own in the process. Both teams really not get, getting any sense of control around the zone area. We could be seeing a lot of this back and forth uh, within the next minute or so. I mean, yeah, it's definitely been a very back and forth game uh, pretty much this whole time. Denny's regular showing that, you know, if you're a god enough gamer, you can win with pretty much any comp, and that includes the comp with, you know, heavy smiling Deco, Ink Brush, and uh, <laughs> the Bubbler Jr. here. Uh, so right now, just Paint Sam's going to be in the zone. The rain is going to pass over. Uh, and it looks like Denny's regular is still going to have control of this zone. Captain Happy 
trying to you know put pressure with that laser and the crab tank is going to come out as well uh from spot is bronze i feel gonna be forced to back up yeah all of denny's regulars is corralled by this sort of stack area that's gonna be an easy cap for spot is bronze here uh and now denny's regulars is in a bit of a weird spot uh not also able to find two picks so that's huge for spot is bronze at this point yeah, huge is for Splat is bronze, but they still are but they still lost members in, in, in the midst of all that. Still really able to retain control of the zone as much as they can. Of course, we mentioned before, Niles getting the two does help them help their cause. They're able to retain the zone, and they're actually not able to get the lead for maybe a few more seconds. They need to win up the zones, which they will here. Hermit does go down in the process. They do shut down the shot. They're, they're Denny's regular. Still not able to wrestle control of the zone. Now things are starting to fall apart at the seams here for just a few moments. Splat is bronze. They dish up the cooler. We do see question mark, question mark, question mark. Able to able to flank on that backhand side with the Nautilus. They did lose zone for about a few moments. So this is probably the first semblance of control that Splatter's Bronze has had so far in this one. Denny's regular, of course, wanting to see if they can respond for themselves. Yeah, but Gray here on this tri Watcher. And Tri is absolutely incredible on this map. One of the best uh, maps in the game for it. And Gray has been making great uses this entire time, throwing those fizzies, putting on so much great pressure, and being so good on these stacks as well. And that's making it really hard for Splatter's Bronze to take these sort of the close range fights. And now, you know, they're three dead. Denny's regulars looks like they're going to be holding on to the zone to get the lead back into their favor. And with a minute and a half left in the game, 25 points to go. Denny's regulars is looking to get the knockout here. This is sort of the last chance for Spot is bronze. They're trying to, you know, drop onto this left side. Crab is going to be popped out. Uh, but it's going to be, yeah, that's just going to be the cap for Spot is bronze. They're taking it from that right side. Yeah, they, yeah, they're not able to really get the zone at all. You saw, you see the crab being popped earlier. It's, they're gonna have to just surrender the zone, just try to retreat a little bit, play it, play it safe. Don't blame Denny's regular whatsoever. But with with the way this game has been, has been progressing, we do see this amount of trading as it's already three down with Typhoon going down. They're they're on top of things, and it's gonna give Splash Bronze fraud watch in the, for that matter. So a chance to move up, trying to see if they can get more paint down. But they did get caught up by the bomb that, there from Hermit Hermit on that side. So Hermit's able to get neutralized one, and Danny Regular actually able to get get the zone back, no problem. We're seeing a lot. Of, we're seeing a lot of this brawling here. I feel like it's gonna come down to is who's gonna get the zones last, and who's able to win out some of these sustained fights. Because more of the uh, multiple members drop on one of these teams, we're gonna the more the zones will stay in their favor. Two down for Denny's regular. Splat is Braun trying to hold on to the zone with 30 uh, seconds left. Yeah, it, it might just come down to overtime here. Splat is Braun so close to getting this lead in their hands. Crap ain't going to be popped. It's going to be huge for them right now. Denny's regular is just not able to drop onto the zone, but the Splat is going to get picked. Three versus three right now. The zone is almost in their favor. They just have to paint it a little bit more, and that Junior is going to help to get that edge, and Hermit's going to find the pick onto the onto the shot here. One player left that was just gray. Has to hold onto the zone for the next 10 seconds here. Trying to fight off the Nautilus. Can't paint the whole zone on themselves. This might just go to overtime, and that's looking like it's going to be the case. It's going to be one final team fight here to decide the winner of game one. Yeah, but yeah, but, but this is what Denny's regular is able to wrestle it through, but they lose three of their own. And now they're gonna tick down on these bumpy points real quickly here as the Kraken just got just got popped. They have to displace the rest of Splatter's bronze. Now Splatter's bronze, they have to hold on to the zone for as long as they can. They're out of the penalty points, but can they win on some of these fights? Any picks will be really good for Splatter's bronze. And, and, and as they're doing a really good job holding off Denny's regular for as long as they can, but that's Hermit going down. The killer the killer will kinda kinda spreads them out just a tiny bit more. There's already all everything into this zone, and they lose two in the process Splash Brown cannot win it by the end of it and Denny's regular takes game one in what has felt like one of the longest overtimes you have seen here today I mean you said it that that overtime timer you know that zone was in neutral for almost 10 full seconds it almost expired just because of that but at the very end Denny's regulars was able to get that zone cap in their favor and it's just really the paint spam from you know the fizzies on the tri slosher the heavy spotting having great burst paint and uh, that Junior just being such a great painting weapon really played into the hands of Denny's regulars at the very last second there. So incredibly clutch against a very, you know, common meta comp. Yeah, I mean, you you you, you pointed it out there. I was wondering how are they going to get the zone back each to one? They're just chuck bombs. They're really the only strategy you can really do at that <laughs> point, point when you're up against a team that their goal is to just retain zone and try to lock out, especially Meikomar. Where if you if you get them off off of that off of that uh, upper ledge and trying to see how they can pro progress it further, it's gonna be it's gonna be bad news for them. So, uh, what a great job honestly from Denny's regular just understanding. Hey, your our only win condition is just is just stalling time for bomb, um, by throwing bombs and then getting, and then taking out a few members, which is enough for us to get the zones back. That was really nice out of Denny's regular. They it felt pretty exhausting for them. So hopefully they got enough energy left. Ship shape cargo code tar target control is gonna be coming up. I'd imagine th things will be vastly different here. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like the cons of Denny's regulars ran was, you know, kind of tailor-made for zones. I guess other than the heavy deco, you know, Kraken is an amazing in zones. It's 
probably gonna be better on tower control if they opt to run it but um i don't know i could be i could be I wouldn't be surprised to see some different stuff. This is definitely not as strong of a map for uh, Triathlon for Nouveau, but uh, I was definitely caught off guard by the comp of Denny's regulars in the first game. So Lightning might just strike twice in that regard. I, I <laughs> honestly don't really know what to expect, um, but the Onus is kind of on spot as Bronze to, you know, look at their game plan, see, you know, what flaws there were in it, and, you know, maybe see if they want to switch up some weapons, or if not, definitely switch up, you know, your strategy, your positioning, and how you want to aggress, you know, as a team. You know, I, I can I can only imagine here they're probably gonna, that we're going to probably be expecting some very uh, silly weapons, or they're going to probably stick to comfort. I feel like you could really go either way either way with that. You mentioned before the A6 gal, uh, uh, Deco there, or I, th I keep saying gal. It's probably the heavy spot <laughs> yeah, with Deco. That's not I, knew, I knew I knew I knew I was going to make that mistake. Today. You can you can tell uh, I you can tell I've been I've been fresh off the bench, not as prepared as I as I as I was. So I apologize for. For me, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of people roasting me. That is not a 96 scale deco kill. That is a heavy splat lane deck. Oh my! I knew something did not click the minute I said it too, Pinky. I I better not see anyone you know clipping Kion making mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. We're all human. Yeah. Okay, let's just roll with it. Let's get on to game two. Potentially the decisive game of the set. Hermit's gonna be switching onto the shot, and the Nautilus is going to be pulled out by uh, Denny's regular as as well. Spot is bronze. Going to be rocking the same squad of fours from game one. Yeah, and the only major change that Hermit switches off to the Shaw, Typhlo has the end depth, they do have cooler coverage, and then of course the Nautilus is, is the flex over, so they shifted their cooler we weapon to the end depth, they're off the end of the end tribe, but the constant here is that 96 gal Deco, they got these, they're gonna keep the Kraken, I think it's a comfort pick for Kuvia uh, throughout this one. Both teams kind of just dueling out right now, two two down, four, Denny's re regular here, make that three, it's a little bit It's a little bit longer here, now it's Captain Happy and the rest of Splat is bronze, broad watch of course, able to push, the, um, able to continue on with the star push, they're approaching the first zone. Yeah, this first checkpoint here is, you know, a little bit, you know, important here, it, it is somewhat trivial though, uh, we're starting to see a little bit of contestant, but it's not going to be enough, and Captain Happy going to be riding the checkpoint uh, all the way through its completion here, and now this is kind of like the free zone of points here. You can really just let the points fall until you get to that uh, about that 30-point mark, but here's Zedney's regulars doing a great job contesting with the Nautilus and the Kraken on the crossfire, but here comes that crab thing trying to, you know, force Gray into an uncomfortable spot. They're going to be forced to jump out into a really uncomfortable spot, and they're going to get taken down by the enemy Nautilus as well, and now, you know, Denny's regulars kind of, you know, scattered all over the place. Now they're starting to centralized by where that first checkpoint once was but now spotless bronze has a ton of control right now on both the map and the tower yeah yeah they have a lot of good, good control on the side now they're just trying to paint over it at, the, at this point Danny's regular is still trying to find a way just trying to even get past it make it to mid and see if they can get in, any control for themselves hermit going down is not going to help matters at least at least in the interim um but we do get to see kubi trying to trying to move this time with the heavy splat lane deck i'm gonna get make sure to get that right this go around as both the end zap and the Nautilus, by the way going down on top of it splat is bronze however still doing a good job fending off denny's regular as much as they can a little bit of a different story coming into this one where they're sticking with the with the morris air club that's working out just for them maybe kubi has other ideas though using the crack try, trying to displace the rest of the group in fact getting one spot already and this will be denny's regular take, taking out two yes they did lose the shot no problem they're approaching the first checkpoint here here for denny's regulars yeah and i feel like i've you know there's two shots in this lobby but i feel like i've not seen much of presence from zuka i feel like that's definitely something that can blow this game wide open and as i say it spot is bronze going to shoot off a bit of zuka it's going to you know expire but right now herma is going to be the one trying to break that first checkpoint and is going to be doing so for denny's regulars there they don't quite have the lead just yet but even getting that first checkpoint is massive you know for their future pushes uh because spot is bronze is really focalized by this right side of the map and denny's regulars trying to move forward into mid kuvi with that crack and trying to spearhead it is able to find a pick now Denny's regulars, you know, they have a ton of space to work with. They just have to start moving forward, start finding these picks on spot as bronze. Uh, things can definitely work in their favor very quickly. Yeah, they're actually still they're still holding a good amount of control here. Typhlo and Ku and Kubia still tr still trying to paint as much as they can. They do get the lead. They are able to push the tower even further. Yes, you do lose a shot, but they still have everybody planted up front. Kubia gets one. Captain Happy goes up, and actually the shutdown there. I saw the cracking game caught, and that's not happening anymore. But they do lose two of their own. It's actually two for two trade on both sides of the sides of the fence there. Now it's a now it's a delayed three. Spot is bronze. Will not be able to hold up the star push any longer. I'd imagine dumps will be coming in, in here soon unless they opt to not do so. As all four members again squared around this tower there. There's the Trizuga. You called it out there earlier. See if it can make an impact. It does take out one. And now fights all across the board. Takes out three members of Denny's regular. Yes, they get the lead. They'll be happy with, with this push any day of the week. And it will be a wipeout by the end of it. But hey, good good hold by Spider's Bronze. But now they, they got to see a response from that. Yeah, 33 is where the lead is going to stand for now. That might be the final lead that Denny's regular is going to get. 
for the duration of this game. One and a half minutes left in this game, and Squadless Bronze can definitely convert all of it into pushing power. They just have to get, you know, situated in the right spots. And with the Crab Tank and Azuka at the ready, they definitely have what they need. But this herb is being so annoying here on this left side. Crab's going to be popped a little bit early, but two down on Jenny's regulars already. Hermit's going to be jumping out, and that lead already back in the hands of Splat is Bronze with just a minute to go, and they're already on that last checkpoint. Splat is going to find one of the picks there. This third checkpoint is, is uh, this last checkpoint going to be stalled just a little bit, but two down on the side of Jenny's regulars means that this is blown wide open. Yeah, yeah, and they're still and they're still holding firm around the, around the control of the zone. Though question mark might might have been trying to bite off a little bit more with the control with the amount of control they had there. Permit needs to escape, which barely they do now. Dodging that now has to dodge all these Trizuka shots just to at least set a point for their team because we see Spiders Bronze having full control of this side of the map, which will make things. Very difficult for Dane's regulars to try to fight back here. Kubi, by the way, pop, popping Kraken earlier. They know that this Kraken's gonna be popped. They're gonna have to wisely retreat here, but this might buy themselves enough space and enough time. But question mark, question mark, trying to say otherwise. Two for two trade on both sides Both sides here. We do see the clear being popped there. Wipeout is secured. Three members of our Splash Bronze. Splash Bronze looking really good right now. Yeah, that might just be a wrap on game two here. This might be all we need to go to game three. 15 seconds left for Chinese regulars to contest the tower, and that's going to require them getting a wipeout from scratch, essentially. And with Crab on the tower, Gray is going to have to make one heck of a flank here on this off angle. That Crab is going to go down. There was four seconds to go. Gray just has to touch the tower, but they're the last one alive, and oh. they're going to go down. Splat is bronze is going to be taking us to a game three scenario. I, I love game threes in the best of three, and, th and the way this game kind of played out, Pinky, it felt like it was almost kind of watching the pendulum going back and forth. We see one team having a, having one good push, the other team has another good push, Breast Blade, and then, and then the same story repeats. And this time, it was it was the last laugh here uh, for Splat as Bronze Fraud Watch, of course, uh, for that group. So it's a great showing for them. I feel like it was, a, it was a big back and forth. It really ultimately just boiled down to who had a better push by the end of it. And that's a, that's a good showing for them in Ship Ship Cargo Code Target Control. Deciding game three gonna be Scorch Gorge Clan Blitz. I can only imagine what one strategy, <laughs> the more the, the elephant in the room people start to acknowledge um there, but we'll leave that aside. We just know that Scorch Gorge Clan Blitz is coming up here, Pinky. Yeah, I mean I think just looking at the first few games and thinking about how it's going to play on Scorch is going to be very interesting because Danny's regulars is or I guess Spot is bronze has been very good at, you know, starting to like getting a strong sustained push and pushing for a good while of time. Um, but Denny's regulars is very good at getting something started very quickly. So those are both different kinds of things that have their own advantages and disadvantages on Scorch. It's really just going to come down to which team can, you know, get a solid push uh, past that ramp. Because that ramp is so incredibly defender favored. But if you can get a wipeout or even like a, a four versus two numbers advantage, you can blow the game wide open, especially with good Zuka and Crab picks, which uh, Splatters Bronze has been using all in that game too. So... I would imagine a similar strategy is going to be coming from them for game three. Similar strategy, I imagine, is gonna be is gonna be the call here for Splatters Bronze. You mentioned um you alluded to before tries to get crab. They can get a lot of value for not only defense but also but also for stuff. It's gonna be really good for them. Um for Denny's regulars, I talked um with that group. I I can only imagine what, what one of the weapons would be, but if we ignore that for a second. I, we saw fundamental weapon changes, but we do see coolers. Um, be, still being dished out, just kind of being uh, switched to switched to different um, people using them. So I'd imagine the constant could be that Kubi is going to be dishing out the, the heavy spot lane deco. Got to remember that this time. Um, <laughs> and then and then the other three weapons, I'd imagine one will be a cooler. That is kind of what I can only imagine that being strategy. We could uh, we could obviously be talking about cracking jumps for days, but that's a, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait until that ever ever comes into play there. Um, on that front, I'd imagine Denny's regulars they may they may stick with that heavy spot lane deco. All things considered, because it is of course comfort for Kubia. I mean, it's comfort for Kuvia, and it's also Clamlets, and uh, if there's yeah. one mode that makes Kraken feel like an actual special, uh, I would definitely say it's going to be Clamlets, but Kraken pushes are a lot more committal than you might think, because it kind of yeah. it essentially requires two specials to be popped, and, you know, your entire team to get wiped if you want to actually, you know, get the full value from it, because, you know, if you don't use Cooler, then you just have stupid eight-second respawns. So, I don't know, let's see what's going to happen. Game three, winner take all is going to decide the set winner is going to move on loser eliminated at fifth place let's take a look at these comps here we're going to be seeing the oh, order shot yep. and the heavy edit coming out from uh, denny's regulars and the 52 gal plus the 10 tech on the side of spot is bronze so just so just a different choice uh, choice of a shot i can only i can only imagine trip strikes kind of being used as a bit of a smoke screen or setup more or less for um for spiders bronze when they're trying to stop the pushes 52 actually like this choice they get a little bit more range on this one but, but their front line is going to probably be the t-tech on spiders bronze so, so i'd like to see a little bit more value coming from that group 
Denny's regulars, obviously, they'll open in the room with, with the uh, heavy spot lane Deco, but if we ignore that for a second, heavy edit is their cooler choice there. They do have um, effectively the vanilla shot in this case, and Hermit's back on their brush. I do like the choices coming out of Denny's regulars. Um, they're obviously the strategy is in play if they want to, if they ever want to take a leverage of it, but they're gonna have to wait probably a few more seconds here. They did lose a lot of members in the process. Hermit's the only one with the special live. Uh, um, both teams kind of just gathering fans at this point. Yeah, I do love to see the heavy edit on the side of Denny's regulars. I think that there's some, you know, instances where it is better than Zap, so I was love to see that weapon getting pushed a little bit more, but um, Spider's Bronze opting to not have either a Crab or a Zuka, which has, you know, been their big re-entry specials, retake specials that they've kind of been relying on. Instead, they have even the Strike and the Whale. I don't know how this is going to play out for them, but for now, that you know, as far as retaking goes, we're not going to know, but they have a lot of mid, you know, painted in their color. They have a lot of clams at their control, but as far as making a charge for the enemy basket, that is not, you know, something they've been able to do quite yet. You know, obviously only a minute into the game, but Kraken is going to be popped out. Two down on the side of Spotted Bronze and Kuvia already positioned under that basket, but now Denny's regulars doesn't have any clams, so they're going to have to go back and grab some more, you know. It's kind of an interesting match, all said, but, you know, Denny's regulars is definitely positioned to get a push if they were to get all their clams together. Yeah, th yeah, and this goal go around, it was kind of more of a display than Kraken trying to assert control of the zone around, or, or, um, in sports around this mid mid type area. And that's kind of, that's what I imagine that Kraken was primarily used for, is trying to make sure Danny Regular is nowhere, is nowhere near uh, when they're trying to push r right up ahead. D uh, um, in this case, however, no looks like it wasn't, there wasn't much out of Danny's Regulars in that in that regard. They do have a power clan that is available, but it's just the brush that has the special, so it's something to just keep an eye on. As you do see the rest of Spire's Bronze was kind of, kind of retreat just for a tiny, Bit there, they're just trying to see as much see as much control as they can. They didn't even need the crack jump. The crack was just there as a displacement <laughs> tactic. That was a bit of a distraction, if you will. They do have the other power glance spawn. They're just gonna wisely keep it in their in, in their uh, back pocket. Just a one and done push here, Pinky. But hey, it's the first points of the game. I mean, yeah, when you're almost you know halfway through the game, uh, non non time for overtime. Any points are good points at this point, and that Zook is going to get a very nice pick <laughs> on that pencil. That is absolutely massive. Going to make it so much easier. Uh, for Denny's regular just to be able to move around. And High Flow gonna take that all the way to the bank and get off to the basket uh, right there in the heavy end. It does have seven claims. I don't think they'll be able to make it to the basket. Yeah, looks like it's going to be another one and done push here for Denny's regulars, but they've been doing a great job, you know, chipping away this point total. And Spider's Bronze has been struggling to respond, but now, you know, they have a power claim. They have a pity claim if needed, and they're starting to get a few of their specials charged up here. Almost a strike, almost to another cooler. So let's see what's going to happen. Two minutes left into this game three. Yeah, two minutes left in this game. See, there's two specials available from Denny's regulars. They had the Kraken, of, uh, Kraken and uh, the Inkworks, but they have the cooler on top of it. So they are actually able to take out one. That's gonna, that's just gonna aid their cause here. Two down, they two down. They're probably not even even need the Kraken for what it could be used for. Hermit is just there to play displacement for the most part, but they're not able to push up just uh, just yet. Clutch trip strikes are made to throw them for for just a bit more time, and the heavy edit goes down. Kuvia does go down. A, a bit of a brawl here. Denny's regular loses three. They got to retreat with this power claim that that I somehow disappeared I imagine was either thrown out of bounds I'm trying to figure out what exactly happened there Captain Happy and the rest of Splatter's Bronze is now is now painted around mid with Captain Happy taking out Kuvia and that's the second pick on from the pencil this should be the push coming up yeah Kuvia's been taking out a lot in this game three compared to you know the other games Hermit trying to hold on is able to find another pick onto this gal who wouldn't be stopping that power claim supply that might be what they need for Denny's regular to hold on to the lead in time for the basket to close and they're going to do just that staving off spot is bronze in the nick of time but you know one minute left in this game anything can happen but all the power claims are gone aside from that pity claim that denny's regulars just received so let's see it's going to be the final fight 50 seconds to go so so the bit so the big thing here for splat is bronze is that th this is actually a very manageable deficit in fact just one plus one enough to swing lead they just actually it's an actually early pop of the cooler on top of it but they do have the trip strikes which will not be used at, the, at this point in time um did they pick up the cooler yes they did so they do they do keep this trip strikes available but they got to spawn that power clam at, uh, at just the right moment here as 30 seconds left to go on the clock here pinky i don't see the power clam quite yet captain abby still trying to is still trying to paint as much control as they can because denny's regular still has some firm control bit as well as soon as i say it, the shot does go down but 17 seconds left two down for denny's regular made that a delayed three splash bronze should be set up yeah, but Captain Happy now has, you know, that power claim in uh, their possession here. Cooler going to throw it onto the enemy ramp. They're so close to getting it. They can just swim forward. It feels like five seconds ago in regular time, 20 seconds of overtime. Let's see what is going to happen. All members up on both sides. Only one special pop, uh, and it's going to be that Kraken. Herbert trying to find it, but it's going to be running into the hands of Gray, and Gray going to be protecting this power claim with their life, with the help of Kuvia. Oh. Going to be firing, pre-firing 
onto that 10 attack shot. And with just five seconds left of overtime, I don't think that Splatter's Bronze is going to be able to do it. And that is going to be a wipeout to celebrate. And Denny's regulars is going to take the set two to one. If it, it, it was pretty much what it, whenever you see a weapon with a Kraken, people will probably focus on Kraken jumps. They didn't even need, need to do that at all. They pretty much won all the fights that they could. A lot of control for for the for the two one and done pushes. Two one and done pushes really all they need because they did a good job defending um the, the rest the rest of the game for the for the most part. The crack was pretty much used to just displace the rest of Spy's Bronze. Spy's Bronze just just kind of being ran around in circles for the most part. Anytime the Spiders Bronze tried to make something happen with, especially the last push, with a lot of pains that they had, did, 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 there was nothing that could be built off of that one. So Denny's regulars 2-1, that's a very good set that, that they take home. They move on to the, to, uh, the next round. Yeah, they're going to be moving on to top four here in SOS uh, to the semifinals. Spiders Bronze had a valiant effort, but they're going to be bowing out, uh, tying at fifth place with uh, some other, you know, very strong teams, such as Salt and Pepper and... Uh, Leger beta, I don't know. I don't want to pronounce that. <laughs> Leger beta qua. I, I, yeah. I guess it was close enough. Qua. You know that. I, you know what? That is a very, very good name. We'll, we'll, I guess we can. I can pronounce it that way. I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. I just reading it in the moment. It was just kind of fried my little, you know, hamster brain uh, for just a little second. But uh, it looks like we already have our next set ready to go. I think we're just gonna jump right into it. No breaks needed. Uh, it's going to be. I believe between uh, Jelly plus, uh, let's see, it's going to be Jelly plus straight equals flopped and that uh, weird face name that I don't really know how to pronounce. I think it's really just a face with two thumbs up. That's really, oh, that's really, I've seen happy face, uh, very, very happy face. For sure, it, it's a face. It has two thumbs up. So I yeah. guess the closest <laughs> we're going to get. Yeah, chat, uh, just, just so we're on, you know, you know the same terms i'm not going to be saying d equals open parenthesis carrot top uh <laughs> oh, oh carrot top close parenthesis equal b every single time i refer to them that's just i'm i'm <laughs> i'm putting i'm stamping my foot down on that one i'm not going to be doing that <laughs> I, I feel like my brain may have just you know expanded just just hearing you pronounce it so if i ever, let me see if i can say it fast d equals no i can't even do it i i even <laughs> I, I just give up i gave up when, it, when the left parentheses kicked in <laughs> for for this team I yeah. just completely gave up. <laughs> oh man. I mean <laughs> I I love good pickups names, the next to the next guy, but uh <laughs> you could be a little bit kinder to your commentators, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean I mean they, I've seen I, I've casted a bunch of pickup names, um I, I the, 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 every now and then. I I'm, I'm trying to remember there's one SOS I did last year. They had the, the most the longest team name that at this point I just kinda just abbreviated like two words. And I'm actually I'm trying to remember the exact. If if I forget your pickup name, that means your your pickup name probably wasn't good, at least for my eyes at the time. So that's probably that might explain a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There, there's I I need there to be like a hall of fame of like oh, no. commentators trying their absolute best to to deal with the insanity that are some pickup names sometimes. Hmm. Okay. So, so next time, Pinky, you and I, if I, if we ever get to do this again, we it, then we get, then we gotta get, we gotta get our list of pick, pick up names, then and, and then let's see if we can try to pronounce those. There, there are a lot of good, there are a lot of good ones. I think Lejebetekwa, which I cannot believe I actually still pronounce that as well as I did. Um, what was I think the other one? Um, you know, at one point I thought that the the Denny's regulars were what were pick up, but I think they are they are actually an actual team. Going to the uh, Sendo Biles, by the way, and there was another team earlier that had like a full-on math equ um, equation for the most part. And, and at this point, if you're telling me that I ever have to pronounce your pickup names, I'm gonna either judge you if you have a bad <laughs> one, or I'll give it an honest effort and then just give up probably in the, after the second syllable. Or we could just like rename it. We could just uh, <laughs> we could <laughs> we could just assign you a new name, uh, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, GG, shake my hand. Shout outs! Shout outs to to teams that will ever be. What was it? Um, little Timmy in the splats and Big Tommy in the splats. Shout out to you, Popgun, for for um for for that rename. But yeah, so we'll so if we ever see that again, give you. We'll, clearly, us two, we will have to be the ones reassigning reassigning your pickup names. If we ever have to see a name that we just give up on, probably after the second syllable. And also, yeah. please don't make me do math in the middle in the middle <laughs> in the middle of commentary with your team name, please. That would that will help me greatly. Yeah, I, I do enough math. This is this is my break from doing math. I don't want to be doing more math in my non-math activities, please. 
No, no math allowed. If you if you're if you're telling Pinky and I to, that we ever have to do math in the, in the middle of commentary, I'm gonna judge you intensely. I'm not gonna be the mean. Math, I'm just gonna judge. The only math I want to do is to see who has the lead and who has the numbers advantage. That's it. That's all I want. Okay, greater than, less count. than, equal to. All I need. All right, less than less than two. Greater than no. I was about to say greater than four. There's no there's there's no team that is greater than four in this case. Uh, so less than three, less than two. And I guess lesson one, which is just zero. That's all I want to remember for today. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. If 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 teammate numbers equal zero, then then you lose. That's that's kind of how the game works. <laughs> uh, gonna say, look, if if we ever, it, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll leave it at that. I'll agree with, with you because I I thought I had something. Then like, nope, my brain also went puny there for a hot second. <laughs> Maybe we'll find More a way to determine <laughs> Um, but yeah, as I said a little bit uh, before the previous set, we are now in best of five territory. So now, uh, team first team to get three wins is going to be getting the set W, and we could obviously go to a decisive game five, which I'm sure all of us love to see a good game five set uh, here and there. And we're going to be starting things off with scenes on Rainmaker Undertow, which is kind of like the 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 I don't know, it's kind of the Rainmaker map in this game. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody just remembers going to Undertow with Spiller. I, I feel like this is the, as you mentioned, the Rainmaker map everybody will inevitably go to. I think some may say the final destination of Rainmaker map, map for the most part, because it is that constant. But hey, both teams should, both teams I imagine will be very familiar having to deal with Undertow, um, with having to deal with Undertow Rainmaker. They played, they played a bunch. So we, so not much to really know here. What just want to see what uh, weapons they want to dish out, of course, for Jelly plus straight equals flop, which I guess is also math. And uh, happy face with two thumbs up. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I'm i curious to see what both these teams are cooking. You know, I saw a little bit of Happy Face uh, in the first set that was streamed uh, for Top Cut. I remember they used, um, I remember they used Crack and Cheese on Inkblot and it worked out. And then I kind of turned away in the game where they uh, were playing Manta. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see what both these teams are going to be cooking with. As you said, Kion, though. Uh, we're pretty much all very familiar with Rainmaker Undertow. It's been a part of our lives uh, for, yep. what, like a year and seven months now. So we're, we're all well acquainted with it. Uh, I'm personally a big fan of it, uh, although I know that, you know, might not be a common opinion. But uh, I don't know. I'm just excited to see what is going to happen. I I feel like a lot of stuff is good here and a lot of stuff is kind of bad, but that's just the game. I, that, I mean, that that is, of course, the game. A lot, of, a lot of these weapons are good. Maybe some of them are not are not too good. And, of course, it also just boils down to how the teams want to execute with them of course um but you but you alluded to it before in my personal opinion probably one of my the only good undertow variation in my personal opinion um the second one being tower control for those curious uh from that from that front um uh, but yeah both teams but as we mentioned before both even you and i both teams i imagine even the odd even our audience chat of course has will have likely seen undertow spillway rainmaker at some point either in the tournament or either during a crazy anarchy uh, rotation of course so there's i feel the both Ultimately, the, the more intriguing part is which path do they want to take? Do they want to go for the quick quick path down the right or go with a much more safer, more conventional left-hand side? Both teams, ultimately, with the way the game will, will go, will, will pick one or the other. I've seen a lot of teams going right side for probably the quick checkpoint, if anything. I mean, yeah, getting that quick check is nice, but uh, in like a pinch scenario. But if you want to get like an action, I feel like the, the best lead you can get is like somewhere in like uh, the, the 10 to 20 point range when you get onto that uninkable bridge. Yep. So to speak, uh, that's really, you know, that's the only way you can have like a safe lead, I feel like, because it can be kind of easy to push up. But, you know, once you get to the uninkable area, you have to walk across. That is kind of, you know, the the real game of inches uh, to decide <laughs> who's going to take it. Um, I, I think, think, yeah, go on. Sorry. I think one weapon class that I would like to see on this map that I think is, you know, stronger than the others are going to be buckets. Um, just being able to fight really well in mid uh, in pretty much all angles, I would love to see you know slot has been on the rise uh machine is you know still good we even saw a bit of tri slash with that last set so maybe we're gonna see some bucket power you know what, if i you know what, if i if we do see buckets here i think it will make me personally happy as a person who also plays a lot of tri slasher for their time so hey it would make me personally happy to see um buckets being being dished out here we um if, especially if any um anybody from both teams wants to dish it out, of course you could really we could go across the board we could i could i can only imagine there will be a guaranteed cooler in Trizuka weapons somewhere. Ideally, I would like to not see those, of course, but um, <laughs> at least for me only, of course. I'm sure there will be others that will be thinking the same thing. But hey, but hey, two two stronger specials, of course. I could I can only imagine one or the other will, will show up 
Also depends on on if both teams don't want to pick it because there's a, there's just a better weapon they're more comfortable with. I feel like they're, they're, we could go a lot of different ways. I mean, yeah, but you know, all roads uh, lead to Zuka plus cooler. So oh no, <laughs> I would hold on. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, if anyone out there still wants to you know their fix of more Zuka cooler, uh, tune into the Spot World Championships later this week. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That, that is kind of like the only guarantee to say, you know, every team's going to have a cooler and most teams are going to have a Zuka if they, you know, want to make the game a lot easier for themselves. That, that, that would be, that would be the, that would be the way where both teams are just like, you know what, this, this is actually pretty good. We should probably pick it. But at the same time, something else is call, calling to me. We, we saw from, we saw from the previous set, heavy edit, you know, um, heavy spotlight deck, which I got to remember that in the, this go around and, me, and many other cho- choices. A lot of things can be tempting. I do, bonus points if you don't end up picking a weapon that includes dry zoo or cooler uh for context but by the way we are we have we have loaded up here to uh happy base with two thumbs up oh no Zuka, you eight. cursed it oh. no yeah i had to hey there's the 96 gal deco it just came a set for a set for me later there's a fishy wielding it you mentioned more oh it's double tri zuka and the pencil this is a very curt at least my personal being a very cursed comp but i did definitely get why you would play it here yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Zuka is incredibly strong in this map, but you know what else is strong? That bucket that DD is going to be using on the side of Happy Face. Uh, excited to see that pop off here, but it is going to be Jelly, the first to grab that Rainmaker, running it down on that left side. Not going to get any points, though. It's going to be three versus three as both pencils are going to be down. DD kind of locked on this right side of the map, trying to, you know, pass me with that tri strike. He's going to, you know, corral Jelly a little bit away from that Rainmaker. Fishy is going to help to do that with the Kraken as well. Going to be able to find a pick, and DD. Going to be moving forward, getting challenged by the City 2, trying to stay alive here, uh, and starting to pave the path for Happy Face to get a good push of their own. Yeah, th- yeah, and Happy Face is, is still, still trying to push with the Slam Maker. They're trying to ultimately pick which side they wanted to go to. It's fine enough time for the Trizukas to just land. They're having to run run across the board there as as the shot and the 96 out deck has gone down. Mars is going to be the one holding this Rainbow. They're trying to go for the tricky right path, but they might have find themselves an entryway to do so. In fact, they get the delayed wipeout. The quick checkpoint cleared on the right hand side they may be able to push for even further as they're as they're right now trying to scroll ball this one in their favor there but they're not able to push up quite yet Sasha does go down by the but by the looks of things and they're just gonna have to retreat so by the end of it just the checkpoint but that's still a nice checkpoint to get yeah the power of mar madness is going to be enough to get that uh checkpoint break for happy face here that's gonna be a big you know load off their shoulders if they want to push it in the future and that kind of puts the onus on a jelly but i mean first they're gonna have to get out of disadvantage which They've been in for quite a while. Whale is going to be popped at the Rainmaker, and Jelly is going to be able to find that trade there uh, with that 52. Um, but the last two members of Happy Face is going to be chilling in this corner. Kraken is going to be popped. It's going to be, you know, running after uh, uh, the shot player, and the shot's going to be able to make it out alive here. But there's still a ton of, you know, map control for Happy Face here. Jelly is kind of locked in a little bit of disadvantage here. They could break out with the Zuka, but not if they get sniped by Zuka first. Yeah, Snipe by Zuka, not always the greatest feeling, which is going to slow down Jelly, Jelly uh, team right there. Then in there, Raybreaker just going to have to reset. So kind of just back to square one, really, for both teams, of course, with the first checkpoint here for, the ha- for Happy Face. Uh, Cyber actually takes off Fishy, which is not, which, which is very good, but, but they got the special available there. Trip Tricks if they want to take advantage, but they're running into a pool of yellow ink, to, so to speak, there. And they're get, they got installed. Um, at that point in time, they did lose two members of their own. They're having to pop this score just to try to stay alive. Arshay breaks the, through that Rainmaker barrier, if anything. No one's going to really quite... Well, no one's going to pick it that up quite yet. And the Trip is just being swung across this Rainmaker here, if anything, just to turn for just a bit. I'm surprised I don't... I can only imagine that this will be resetting. Nope, I lied. Harshi picks it up anyway. Yeah, having Face still running into this public pool of yellow ink that uh, Jelly has been painting the ground with here. Uh, and, this, you know, they try to move that Rainmaker, try to get some points on the board. They cut it down to 90, but uh, Fishy is going to be on it here, not going to be allowing any check breaks. But two down to the side of Happy Face here. Jelly, four up, and they have Azuka at the ready. And the Whale that they just popped, both of the specials are going to be burned here uh, as they look to get this checkpoint here with the Rainmaker. But Fishy able to find a pick onto the opposing gal with the 96. Uh, and right now, you know, Happy Face trying to hold on here as the Rainmaker is going to reset to mid. One minute and 45 left in this game, and it looks like it's going to be a game that's coming down to the checkpoints. 
Yeah, this ultimately might be, as you mentioned, the game that will ultimately be decided by checkpoints and who just gets there even past it. If anything, both teams are just kind of playing this one very well against each other. Nobody really could get, get it out of neutral. The only time that we saw it was when was when Happy Face with the two thumbs up, able to win out that fight earlier with the delayed wipe that gets the quick right checkpoint, but that's all it was going to be. Uh, Happy Face already loses two of their own. They're running face first into the Trizuka shots. They pick up this Rainmaker. They're going to push it to the conventional left-hand side. Maybe, unless they're trying to play a little bit of a this direction there, but they're having to dodge all the Trizuka shots. Kraken has them up on top of it here, and they are committing to the right-hand checkpoint. Kraken's gonna be just a bit, no, actually able to get the Rainmaker uh, stop, if anything. One minute left to go, that might have been the clutch stuff that, that the Heavy Face team needed. Yeah, Fishy, you know, able to, you know, running for that assist in just the nick of time, uh, with the, you know, help of everyone else in Heavy Face going to be holding on to that checkpoint a little bit longer, and, you know, even forcing Jelly to have, you know, commit that bit more time towards getting that lead, is absolutely massive for them. And with 40 seconds left to go, that could be the deciding difference here. Map is entirely painted in Happy Face's color. It's going to be three versus three right now. This gal is going to be popping on the right side though, and it's going to be finding the pick onto the opposing gal, popping the whale, trying to displace the pencil, and that looks like it's going to be a checkpoint here, but not if TD has anything to say about it. Yeah, not if they have anything to say about the Now they're just throwing everything into this right side checkpoint. When are they going to keep doing it though? That's the ultimate question. They're going to likely try to pick up this uh, Rainmaker if anything. They take up the Sasha with the nice stop, but Fishy's right there with the Kraken. Rain over, but not able to get through the check. Not able to stop the Rainmaker in time. They're still able to get through the checkpoint. Now Fishy just stood there for about a few seconds to just need to pick up this Rainmaker and take the lead just by moving up a few inches. I believe they did flip lead somehow by the end of it. We're gonna wait did to see they, how they the didn't get off the out. pedestal. They did. Oh, they, they did. did by just a few yeah. points. Wow, that really came down to frames there at the end. Because even though Happy Face got the pick, they didn't get overtime because they were just a little bit too slow. That was a wild ending, but it's gonna go in favor of Jelly here for game one. Yeah, yeah, Jelly, like right at the next time, it was pretty much like trying to trying to uh, run your head against the wall, wall basically. It's like, you no, know, you're just gonna go for this right hand side checkpoint. And I don't blame him at all for this, by the way, because the win condition was just literally the checkpoint and then moving moving a few inches. As you mentioned before, I don't think this is what you imagined when you said it was a game of inches. D we expected the unequal area, but it happened to be the checkpoint in this case. Kind of a case of how both teams are so evenly matched uh, in this regard. So. So hey, they won out the they won out that last fight, and as you mentioned, overtime just didn't kick in item um right right when they needed it to, and that's is how Jelly plus straight equals flopped wins game one. Crab Lake Capital Clan, but it's the next one. That was a very fun game one though, nevertheless. Yeah, um, just predictions for game two. If there's any map mode in the game that or any clans map in this game that kind of feels like there is no hope of pushing without Kraken, I feel like it is Crab Lake. Yeah. So yeah, Happy Face, you know, has a bit of an advantage in that aspect. Fishy very strong on the 96 even without you know relying on crack and cheese and uh with that at their disposal i'm sure happy face is you know definitely smiling as is shown by their team tag here and jelly even though they won that last game they are gonna have to you know bring something to the table to combat that you know crack and power if they were to bring out the 96 l deco or a variant of it from happy face th this is a as you mentioned this is a very tough map to try to stop the crack just because of how the map is mostly designed because you're going to you know it's a huge space too so this buys enough time for the crack to get built and once the kraken goes goes deep into it there's the jumps are almost inevitable at that point so the goal here is that if you want to stop cracking you have to find ways to not allow that uh, not allow that cracking to just build build up ink to get those early crack dumps but also at the same time you're gonna also go full commit each go around so you're having to look for better pushes each time so if happy face wants to dish out the crack and jumps or the crack and cheese if you will this will be a good map to do so um much to the chagrin of probably a lot of people watching yeah i mean crack and cheese you know can be kind of boring to watch at times but uh these are definitely some fun teams so i'm hoping to see some cool stuff uh we might just see a lot of zookas though to be completely candid because that seems to be what jelly uh is looking to play and i mean kudos to them it got them that game one win and it got them to this point of the tournament but uh Maybe Happy Face is going to be the brick wall that's going to force them to change their ways a little bit and move a little more, a little closer to the side of the the brightness. Yeah, yeah. Find the light if you. Not the Ooh. weapon I was expecting. Not the weapon I was G expecting. Leader. For the oh, it's dueling Krakens, by the way. It's yeah, it's, custom e leader, it's custom e leader versus the 96 Gal Deco. I can only imagine that this will be a game. This that this could be a game where Kraken Dunks will be the name of the game, as we've mentioned before. It's a very Kraken happy map for for that kind of strategy. Though I am excited to see how this custom e leader is going to be delivering. 
Yeah, hold on to your right sticks, folks, because uh, you're going to want to click that in, especially since Jelly's going to get a two, a 4v2 advantage in the first 20 seconds of the game, and they have so much clan economy, and that's already going to be the shot. Going for the flank, getting the pick on the enemy pencil, and being ever-present here on this uh, left side is finally going to go down, though, But and that is not enough of a diversion for Jelly to make it to that basket, and all of a sudden, all that advantage they had kind of evaporating as DD is going to be holding forward here. They do have two power clips at the ready, though, and a Kraken. Uh, so all they need is the cooler, and they're going to have all the ingredients they need for, you know, that Kraken push. Yeah, yeah, the ultimate time is when they're going to use it. There's that Kraken that's, that, that has been popped up. Look at that one Kraken there. Fishy is diving deep. The, the idea, I, I believe, was sound. It was Fishy trying to dive deep, trying to prevent this push from happening. They take out two, and... Wait, did they, they didn't even get the they didn't even get the power climb, and I think it was actually shut down by the end of it. By the end, or it was missed. There, it looked like it was actually missed. Of that, I that forgot. That no, is, or they went down on top of it. Yes. The the way that you deal with crack and cheese is exactly what DD is running. It's the triple ink strike that kills you before you can you can hit the ground and throw the ball. So DD having that tri strike is a great countermeasure to um the crack and charge that Jelly using now. Jelly, they don't have their own strikes, so. Whenever Happy Face is going to be, you know, using that Kraken push, they're going to have a much harder time responding to it. Uh, so, you know, that's an interesting opponent that, you know, we didn't account for going into it. But even still, it looks like Jelly is going to be the one that's winning the majority of these <laughs> fights. And that Zuka pick onto Didi is absolutely massive. And two power clans are looking like they're going to be entering the basket of Happy Face. That's good. That's a conventional push that is going to succeed very well. And they're still winning out some of the fights. This is Jelly plus straight equals swap. Not only getting the wipe out there, but they're keeping this push tremendously alive. They're going to bring down the 36 points remain. Not enough clams left. If they somehow get even more control of the of the of that area, they might be able to get more in, but they're going to wisely retreat. And talk about things swinging the other direction. The Trizuka takes out one member on, on the top right, and it just opened, and the far gate basically opened. They get the, they get the wipe out later on. This is a, just a great start for Jelly Plus Street to pop. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have that numbers advantage to shoot at that ramp, essentially, on this map, it's very easy to just waltz on through. And now Kraken battles are going to be happening. They're going on head-to-head -head combat here, but that uh, ball player is going to just be hit back. It's going to be jumping in with that end tap, and it's going to be another, you know, power clamp score. But that might have worked in the favor of Happy Face. That just gives them another pity claim to work with. It looks like Jelly's not going to be able to convert off of that with more points, though. Um, but with 2 minutes and 15 seconds left, it's kind of concerning that Happy Face has not been able to string a push together whatsoever, even with Fishy on the 96, and they've not been able to charge a Kraken all that effectively in this game yet. 2 minutes to go, and Happy Face is going to have to make some changes fast. So here's the so here's the issue when you do when you do the crack jump maybe a little too early on, on under go round here you're gonna give them a free power clamp to work with and this is a this is almost a dream situation if you will pay attention to fishy here fishy has that kraken they're gonna pop it this is fishy gonna have to go for the go for the jump trying to go right deep into the thick of things everybody is prepping up and ready to go there's the kraken they get one here's the end zap here are the three power clams that just brought it down the 40 points for me yes you are wiped out but you made the game so so much more manageable. It goes back to the uh, earlier attempted cracking jump from Jelly Plus Jacob Park. Did not only not break, they did not break the penalty points, they gave Happy Face a free power clamp. That is how we see them get, get, get the three power clamps in right away. Here's another cracking from Harsh. Yeah, but with 30 points of penalty, you know, Happy Face is going to need three power clamps to get the, uh, get the lead. And it looks like the Jelly won't even give them the opportunity because three more power clamps is enough for them to get the knockout here. And Jelly is going to go up 2-0 and in this best of five series. Well, this was certainly a game of all time, Pinky, when it comes to Kraken jumps for the most part. Because we this was basically used in full committal there. First push was conventional, and then we, they just both teams just like, okay, we're done here. Let's just get the three power clam Kraken jumps out of the way. And again, it was the right idea from the happy face. If you're going to get a free power clam from the, uh, by shutting down basically the one and done push, you may as well try to commit all three. But then the uh, but then here's the problem, though. You leave a lot of clams available for the other team to just pick up, and they can counter with their own Kraken jumps themselves. It's a, it's a classic case of you're over committing your jumps just to get just to break it down to 40 then you have to just completely reset your defenses by the time that happens all the clamps are just pretty much gone jelly has all the clamps he needs to get the ko that's how they're up 2-0 in this best of five yeah uh that i feel like this set so far is a, a great um how do i say this a great argument in favor of uh special bans and restrictions in this meta um yep <laughs> i know there's a survey somewhere floating around there on twitter so uh if you have opinions that you would like to voice, there is your avenue. I know it's been retweeted a bunch. Uh, look for it. It's there if you can find it. But uh, Jelly going to be taking, you know, the advantages of their comp all the way to the bank, riding a 2-0 um, 
lead here in terms of games and you know absolutely deserved with how well their play has been and it's on it's up to happy face to step it up because they're going to have to make a reverse three will happen if they want to stay in this tournament and it's gonna to have to start here and now on zones mahi this is now the case of you've got a reverse sweep and if you're gonna have a strategy ready to go for bahi mahi zones you bet you better find one here at least the constant of jelly has had or excuse, correction how ha what happy face had here is that they that their constant has been the Kraken here, but I'm, I can only imagine they're going to keep it, if anything, just to displace, just to play the same strategy of displacing, but they but they got to figure out how to way to do so, especially when, when you factor in that the map overall changes around the 60 point marker. That's kind of where the map starts to open up and maybe things can just change on a dime. So if this is, if you got something ready to go for happy face with two thumbs up, of course, this is the map to do so. And you got to win the next three to do that. Ironically enough though, I personally don't like to play on this map when the water drops uh in disadvantage I, I get because, that because when the water drops then your only way in the mid is to drop off of a ledge which is extremely easy easy to get camped and you know very telegraphed so in some senses it can kind of get more snowbally after the water drops so whoever has advantage once the point total hits 60 is going to have a huge advantage for the rest of the game but you know at this level of play these teams are used to you know all of you know what they need to retake here we go uh but to the last game of the set between Jelly and Happy Face. These comps are going to be coming out. Double Zuka coming out on the side of Happy Face. They are tired of the Zuka spam. And uh, Jelly going to be, you know, running a little bit of, you know, frontline diversity with the Gal, T-Tech, and V-Shot. Only the big variety out of Jelly was that T-Tech and the 52 Gal. Otherwise, everything is pretty much in the name of the, uh, everything is pretty much dueling pencils and a dueling shot. So pretty much the weapons, that, that pretty much the weapons you're going to be seeing a lot here and again what reasons why these weapons are very strong here today right away the cooler's been popped up right out of the gate trip strikes being dished out there actually down to a suction bomb if anything on the shot and a nice second shot there as well should be able to extend this push a little bit further and it will and th this will be the first point for jelly plus three equals pop looking to, to complete the sweep here if they can keep this up yeah jelly maintaining that momentum uh from the last two games into this one already close to that 60 point marker where the water is going to drop and they still have all four of the members alive a lot of them are close to specials but fishy is going to be popping back in his zone as that water is going to drop and fishy going to be finding a pick onto one of the shots there and it's trying to get set up on this right side here picks are happening a little bit Kane is coming out of the zone but it's still not quite enough for a cap just yet happy faces to paint it a little bit more and jelly is starting to respawn here they're gonna hold onto the zone for just a little bit longer here and happy face not really able to get that advantage going in their favor quite yet yeah, Happy Face really needs to find needs to just find any semblance of control or do anything. Maybe this crack from Fishy was gonna help matters. They're gonna displace one member there. They take out the shot, which is gonna help tremendously. Opens up the map for, for just a few moments. The spring was being dished out there on top of it. Now they're just trying to fiercely paint over the zone as much again, and they succeeded. They put the they put uh, the penalty points for Jelly in this case. Happy with two thumbs up with a nice stop there. They take out the T-Tech. Now they're trying to see if they can do the same thing to them, and they're doing just that. Jelly going down to Ultra Solo, who gets the double. Look for the triple they can do just that it's going to be the assisted triple of anything but this is time for happy face with two thumbs up to continue to press with this advantage yeah happy face now you know ultra solo chilling up here dd is going to be with them both of them are going to drop back in the mid just trying to cycle out, in and out this pressure two minutes gone but happy face starting to rack up those points here they're below that 60 point mark themselves 20 is going to be the score to beat but this zone timer takes so incredibly uh quickly here and Jelly has not really been able to respond quite yet. They not just don't want to drop into the you know loving arms of Happy Face here. And they're going to find a pick onto the pencil, but the strikes are going to be enough to get the cap in Jelly's favor, even as they go three down. Last one is going to be that B shot, and Happy Face is hunting for them right now. Yeah, the B shot for T, T Lock though. They did they did finally hunt them down. That bought enough time for Jelly. Plus straight equals flop to, to get that zone flip at, at the necessary time. They may be able to do it again here unless Happy Face is able to throw in all the ink they can on this one. Yes, they will. Jelly, Jelly, if anything, trying to play for the right or trying to attack on the right hand side, excuse me, the, uh, from that at that point in time. They got the cooler being dished out there so they can move up up ahead, able to paint the zone, and then try to see if they can get everybody out of there. They did just that. They take out two. Everybody has to retreat. Now Jelly plus straight equals a flop, of course. Is gonna have to try to keep up with this advantage themselves. Kraken was I was pretty much picked, used to help displace the rest of the enemies, and then try to escape with it. If anything, though, Jelly is trying to play. The turrets are gets a double, unbelievably so. Three down by Happy Face, and this will be Jelly. Uh, and this will be Jelly but straight swap, continuing with this advantage. 52 gal is broken. I've been parroting it for so long. What was that, Jelly? You are cracked for getting that double in that spot, and that might be just what Jelly needs to get this win as a team here almost through that penalty and once they're done 
20 points to go. Zuka is going to be done uh, for Happy Face. They have another one at the ready, but three versus two. This number's advantage is not in this favor. We might just be seeing a 3-0 here in semifinals of SOIs. It's just going to come down to this last painting battle, and that is it. Jelly plus straight equals flop gets a 3-0 win over D equals open parenthesis carrot top. Oh, open, uh, carrot top. Close parenthesis equals B. <laughs> Congratulations, Jelly plus straight equals flop. I was not ready for that one. Good job there, Pinky on this one it was ultimately a game of just total control there and jelly just going off on the 52 really just helped bring this one all the way home what a well played set overall from a jelly plus straight equals flop in there winning this one 3-0 for um for, but this one be, being as back for it as it could have been i love the valiant attempt that um th that that this happy face team tried to dish out just did not work out by the end of things and jelly plus straight equals flop did a great job in this third game of course, um, they're able to take this one home with the sweep. Yeah, and I mean, in an homage uh, to the Splatoon 1 servers shutting down, Jelly plus trade equals flopped, uh, completely shut out Happy Face on <laughs> that Mahi game. Uh, and they're going to be moving on to the grand finals of Swimmer Sync 144. Uh, just one set left to be played to determine our champion. And that is going to be happening after a short break. Make sure not to go anywhere. Stay tuned because we are going to be coming back with grand finals of Swimmer Sync.
How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Swimmer Sing 144. My name is Broken Binky. I'm joined by the wonderful Kion, and we have grand finals coming up in our near future. But speaking of the near future, Kion, I think we, we have some 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 events in our near future. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we got a, we got a few events, of course. We we could be for, um, worlds, of course, coming up in LTC. But the big one is Momo is that there's a new land in May as well, MomoCon. So two and three will be at MomoCon in Atlanta, Georgia, happening May 24th to 26th. Enjoy the competition, then explore the largest anime convention in the Southeast U.S. There's panels for anime, games, comics, and more. They got a huge vendor and artist's alley and overnight Kemet Arcade access. But of course, this is with two and three tournament um, over there at MomoCon. So if you want to uh, si si uh, sign up and, of course, attend. Um, you can buy the Kukon Passes at Momocon, uh, uh, www.momocon.com, and you can sign up for Splatoon at, at start.gg slash tournament slash Momocon as well. I hope to see you guys there because I'm actually going to Momocon uh, instead of LTC this go-around, only because everything seemed to line up for me that, that, that time. Oh, really? Nice. Well, that works out because uh, you can meet Kion at uh, Momocon and you, get, you guys can meet me at Low Tide City because that's where I'm going to be. Uh, yeah. May. <laughs> that's gonna be my land of choice uh i would imagine dd who uh we saw play a little bit earlier on on the on happy face is probably gonna be at momocon considering they've been there for smash for the past few years um but yeah low tide city the final low tide city is also gonna be coming up we're not you know sponsored of course registration is ending but i think it's a pretty rad opportunity uh just go to pretty much any land that you can because going to lands is such a unique experience that like it, it's it's hard to to replicate it in any sense of the word. So I would recommend going to whatever land you can. And even if you can't, just tune in because a lot of great Splatoon's come your way. You know, you got Worlds, you got Low Tide City, you got Momomocon, and so many, you know, smaller lands uh, sprinkled in throughout our, you know, schedules here and there. So there's a lot of Splatoon content to be consumed, and there might be a land closer to you than you think. So see what you can do and see if you can head out to one of them. Support your locals. Of course, send the lands if you're able to, as you mentioned, low, last Low Tide City coming up. Yes, I will be at uh, MobileCon as well. As well, um, Hope to see you guys there if you guys do attend. And just to illustrate how different it is, you know, playing an online tournament versus being at a land, the energy is crazy for the most part. You get to meet all, you get to meet all the people there, of course, and you, you obviously get to play in a land environment, but the just it, it feels very different, let's put it that way. Like, the energy is crazy. I was at Riptide 2023, or Riptide last year, and I could, and that was my first ever land. I could definitely tell the vibes were just fantastic. So if you're able to go, that would be awesome. But hey, that is, but hey, that that is that is, those are our upcoming events, of course, Worlds and the two events in May, LTC and MobileCon. Oh my goodness, I'm actually kind of excited for this upcoming month, <laughs> all things considered. But forget about the future. We are now in the present. What the present is going to bring to us yes. is grand finals of Swimmer Sink in one corner. After a dominant 3-0 sweep and coming off of six six uh, game win streak, going back as far as three sets, we have Jelly plus Straight Eagles flopped, and on the other corner, on the other side, coming off of a game five set versus the number one seed of the tournament, coming back onto the stream, it's going to be Denny's regulars. Those are going to be our two combatants going to be squaring off to see who is going to win Swimmer Sink 144. Always fun to see. I would love to see the grand finals, of course, go the distance. We got to see both of these teams earlier today, of course. Denny's regular, regular say have a variety of different weapons. Of course, we saw the uh, heavy splatling deco making its appearance. Of course, Jelly plus straight equals flop. They got, they got, they got, they got very standard, but they had a very dominant um, semifinals matchup that we saw on stream earlier today. So, love to see these two teams duke it out, of course, in the best of five. We got our maps, of course. Uh, coming up, Hagelfish Market Tarkshul feels like it feels like we see this map everywhere else, but we get to see the rest of the maps coming up ahead. Hagelfish Market Tarkshul, both teams, of course, should I imagine would be very familiar with this one, but in case you don't, pay attention to that second checkpoint. That can be very tough to contest. Yeah, that I mean, I couldn't send it better myself. That second checkpoint, who oh boy, talk about bottlenecks. <laughs> yup. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is a pretty big bottleneck set here. We got. PC, uh, Hagelish, and Rainmaker Humpback all guaranteed, and those checkpoints are pretty big, uh, and that final checkpoint on Humpback especially is pretty big. Um, and then if it goes to a game five, we have TC on Mako. So this might just be a set of inches, but Jelly has a ton of momentum. As I said, I mean, 
winning six uh their last six games all in a row, including sweeping both the Salt and Pepper and Happy Face. But Denny's regulars just had a very hot game five set versus the Little Boy Squad, the number one seed in this tournament. And now these two teams are going to be duking it out. Uh, and it's going to be starting on TC Hagel. So I'm excited to see both of them. Uh, Denny's regulars, of course, we saw them a bit earlier. Very creative with the comp choices. Um, and it's been working absolutely great for them here uh, to get to this point. Jolly Bull Straight equals Flops has been going, you know, more of the standard, you know, side. Zooka Spam plus the pencil. But uh, I guess it'll really be a clash of competitive ideas. Using what you love versus using what's meta. I this is pretty much how, what that site is going to be dictated is how you execute with your comfort choices or the weapons you love the most versus the one versus the weapons that will be super popular. Mentioned before, we saw a combination of, of one Trizuka and one cooler for sure. Met, harkening back to all worlds will eventually leak that uh, for Jelly plus straight equals uh, flopped. And of course, but hey, you mentioned before how Denny's is just fresh off of game five, they're just jumping right into this one. I can imagine that, yes, you have won five in a row, you did have a bit of waiting time because the other team, because that other set just went, went as long as it did. So, you gotta probably de rust probably just a tiny bit, um, on, on that front, on that front, getting your mental state ready to go. But you got a grand final set coming up here, and hopefully, both these teams can d dish out some cool ideas. Of course, I'm always a fan of, of weapon varieties, um, especially with these weeklies. Oh yeah, absolutely. I want to see some, some. I just like to see some new stuff. You know, I've I've been in the commentating business for quite a while. I've seen a lot of coolers. I've seen a lot of zugas in my days. I've seen a lot of crabs and a lot of machines. Um, but I I haven't seen that many heavy decos. I haven't seen you know a ton of ink brushes. So I love to see just that little bit of spice. Keeps a little bit interesting. It keeps the love of that game alive just a little bit longer. Uh, and I'm looking forward to see the set. It really is just like. Assuming Denny's Regulars continues with their creative co compositions, it will be like a clash of competitive ideas, and that, I think, is going to be very captivating, but only time will tell us uh, our players are going to be picking their weapons before we get into Game 1. T t both teams going to have to just mentally be, be ready for this one. We've, we've uh, ta talked about it before as well. I will. It's primarily comfort for Denny's Regulars. We've seen... Uh, Kubia, at least at least from the games we saw on stream for Kubia, obviously the heavy spatling deco permit switching between brush and I believe and I believe the shot as well. We do get to see a little bit of um, different members playing the playing the cooler side, but that has usually been the constant that we've seen from Denny's regulars. Uh, Jelly plus straight equals flop. You mentioned before you're you're playing primarily what is what is strongest right now. I would love to see just all it all really just boils down to just execution as you mentioned, just how the ideas work together here. Because if you are able to execute with comfort, you may not you may not have to worry too much about the meta but, but of course execution is key when it comes to these things. We are still slowly getting getting the weapons finalized here, Pinky. Hopefully we get hopefully of course for both of us we love to see this go to game five. But of course I'd imagine one of these things just want to be just want to get this done does it we're loading up to game one right now. Yeah, let's just get right into it. Here we go. Grand finals of Swimmer Sink 144. Let's get right into it. We're seeing the double splatling comp on the side of Denny's regulars and Jelly going to be pulling out that squeezer that we didn't see, you know, in that last set. But that's going to be, you know, their mid range Zuka option. And it looks like Denny's regulars doesn't have a ton of stuff to contest with that range plus that splash wall. So, so the interesting here because uh, I, I think the Denny's regulars are actually on the purple side. So they are actually having your, having your, uh, Heavy splatling uh, deco for that one, and the and the heavy edit as well as so the cooler. It's pretty much as you mentioned before. It's comfort, but you have cooler options outside of jelly plus three equals flop. You do have that trizuka. It's on the squeezer, which you don't normally see often, but I love the pick here. T T Tech, of course, for the coverage, and Jelly, who just we saw. Remember that one map where they went off with the 52 earlier. The love to see how how Jelly executes with that. Could be, by the way, using the Kraken, but it may able to get value. Not quite an able, uh, not quite yet. One of the members able to escape with their lives. Tower's only been touched to just 92 points remaining. Both teams kind of just stuck around neutral. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a neutral game here. Um, it, it's not going to be until some advantage gets started, that tower gets pushed. But right now, it looks like the map control is in favor of Jelly Bull Straight Equals Flop. They have the tri strikes out. Uh, Whale from the from Herbert is going to be the contestant for Denny's regulars. And it is going to be helping to get that pick onto the 52, as is the Zuka in that sort of right alleyway. And Hermit is still going to be pushing forward on this right side. Enemy Whale's going to be coming out to locate them, but Hermit's able to find that trade with a shot. But right now, three versus two numbers in favor of Jelly, as Jelly is going to be on the flank here on this left side with his 52. Going to try and find this jump on the gray, which is not going to quite be able to do it, but gets the assist. Uh, but it's just kind of complete mayhem right now, but Jelly starting to push that tower. 
We are, we're seeing for a minute and 30 of both teams just battling out in neutral, trying to outmaneuver the other. Jelly may have broken that one just a bit here as the floodgates are starting to open here. Three members have gone down, delayed three on top of it, really. But they should be able to approach the first checkpoint. Should be not an issue uh, around that side. Now we got to see how Jelly continues to press for their advantage. The squeezer did go down on top of it. They do pop this whale out from Jelly. They take out two. Actually, they took out Kumi with the whale here, but they're losing two in the process. Jelly just needs to plant themselves in safe position, if anything, but they're going to play very aggressive. It's going to catch the attention of her who cannot win the duel, but the tower just buys enough time for it to reset. Unbelievably, nobody really made the tower at this, at this stage. They're just going to have to drive it back to the second checkpoint, but still in control for Jelly. Jelly is still up here in the 52 gal. Oh, finally gets taken out. Commentator's curse, I guess, is Bray able to find them there. But they was getting chip on everyone here. And Jelly plus Trady plus Flop is going to be pushing that tower down to 41 points, not going to get any work done on that second checkpoint. But a very strong push here, two and a half minutes into this game. Danny's regular hasn't been able to respond to it just yet. Double wall is going to be coming out uh, to keep this left side a little bit barricaded for Jelly here. Uh, but right now, Denny's regulars has that tower in control. They have that tower special advantage. Their cooler is dropped, and they have a numbers advantage. All the components are ready for them to start getting a push. And Kubi is going to try and set up onto the enemy uh, ten here, but they're going to get taken down by, I believe, Gu Guapo in the process here. So a bit of an awkward start to Denny's push here. Uh, let's see what they're going to make happen on this right side. It looks like they're going to off the back out for now. Kind of just got deterred there. You mentioned before, oh, the recipe was just there to use the cooler. You got the, you got the, you got the main advantage. Now just trying to put, just trying to push up, but they lose Kuvia there on that side. May have just kind of uh, spooked them just a tiny bit more, and it ended up just having Denny's regulars to just retreat, not get much out of the, out of the cooler if anything. And Jelly, Jelly just has some, some decent control around this area. Jelly is just lurking for the side. They also lose. It's also two down on top of it for Denny's regulars. They're gonna have to just retreat for the hills there and look out for Jelly. Jelly's just looking on the side, but actually Jelly does get shut down. It is just gonna be one down on both sides, if anything. And it will be Jelly plus straight equals five. They're, dri they're driving this tower down here around this path. And they still should be set up for success here. They just gotta make it to the second checkpoint. But we mentioned it earlier, that second checkpoint can be very hard to, to get through. Yeah, uh, but it looks like Jelly's not even gonna opt for that. They're just gonna keep that tower in their possession. They have that special charge working in their favor. And that's just gonna make things harder for Denny's regulars to get back into the game. Kuvia in the Kraken trying to get some sort of value, but it's gonna be forced to back off a little bit before getting back onto the tower. 55 seconds left in this game, and Denny's regulars has not even been able to get past that first checkpoint here. But I mean, they're gonna have to get something going quickly here if they wanna stay alive in this game one. And with Permit going down early and the paint advantage all in favor of Jelly right now, things are not looking good for them. Yeah, things are, aren't looking too good for Denny's uh, regulars at this point. They're, they're just losing members when they when they needed them most. As soon as I say that, though, they take out three. They actually won the fight. I believe Hermit and the and Time Flow were able to get value out of this one, and they're actually able to take this tower. They just need to ride it through to the first checkpoint. And this is where things can get a little tough. But they got to start pushing up ahead. They got two special. They are going to use both of them there. That's the Kraken dish in. They're trying to displace Jelly there. Let's see if the Trizuki can cobble on top of it. The, way, uh, the wall there, of course, well placed. But there are about 10 seconds left to go on the clock. Jelly has gone down on top of Trip Strikes being used there as a deterrence, if anything. But they may have, bought, but they may not be able to win this fight. Just you know, it's three down. That just has to be somebody touching the tower. And that'll be Jelly plus straight Eagles off holding off what could have been a Denny's regular comeback. They win game one. That was almost terrifying because those strikes were used way too early. Way, way, <laughs> way, way too early there. Um, by Jelly straight Jelly plus straight equals swap. I mean that. That might have just been, you know, a little bit of the nerves getting to them here, a little bit of that antsiness. Um, but even still, they're able to win that team fight they're after and use those strikes as that sort of displacement to uh, get the, the 4v1 numbers versus Denny's regulars. And they're going to be able to take that game one. And Jelly plus trade equals flopped. Even though they haven't played uh, a set in this tournament in a while, they are keeping that momentum going strong. Yeah, yeah, it's, I believe six. Uh, you, I think you mentioned it was six straight maps earlier. Or it could be six or seven. Either way, that momentum is just is just strong right now for Jelly Plus Trade Equals Flop. Still have yet to drop a set going back to their set against ATP in round two. So they're still keeping that one going. But of course, Denny's regular. So a little bit more. So a few maps ago, Humpback, Pump Trap, Rainmaker being the next map up in the queue. We saw from we saw from map one. It was kind of a game where Jelly Plus Trade Equals Flop able to win the fight. Just allowed it to continue on to the continue on to the second checkpoint. Got a little scary at the end. They were probably looking to clean this one up. This can also be a very fast map, though, because of where the checkpoints are lo located on the sides. So I'd imagine it's going to probably be going down to a few key fights. Probably even one would be just enough to get a big lead. Yeah, I mean, I talked about the Splatoon 1 server shutting down a bit earlier, um, but 
Rainmaker Black Valley is still going to live on because in this map, no lead is safe unless it is a knockout. That is just how it goes. It's so easy to get from 60 points to 6 points in like half a second because you just hold forward for a little bit and there you go. So this, this map is always on a razor's edge. Like there's no definitive win until they're until the knockout horn like sounds so it's going to be a very tense game too uh between jelly and denny's regulars here and this could be a very pivotal game for the set because if jelly takes this game that's going to make things so incredibly difficult for denny's regulars not just in terms of what they have to do but in terms of the momentum so this is a really important game for denny's regulars to win if they want to have a good chance in this tournament i mean if you're gonna have a swinging map this is gonna be one of those uh maps where Denny's regulars will need to win, win on some of their fu fights, if anything, and just try, try, try to build off it. You mentioned before, don't, just don't let up until you until you see that K, uh, KO happen, or even when you see the games over at that point. I see a ball point there. I believe it is the it is the ball point with the ink back for sure on the side of Jolly Plus Eagles Fall. Very different here from Harshi on that side. That's really the big thing to note. Other side, it's Gray switching over to the Triangle. Well. Those are the two big weapons I've noticed so far being being used here in this map. I mean, yeah, like uh, like Mega Zones in a, a few sets ago, Tri Nuvo is incredibly strong on this map, so no surprise to see Gray switching over to it here. Now, early numbers advantage for Denny's regular is uh, definitely what they're going to want, but as you said, Kion, that ink back on that ball Nuvo is going to be really nice for Jelly Bus Ready with Swaps, but it's not going to be enough to stop that first checkpoint from falling uh, for Denny's regulars here, and they still have a massive numbers advantage, four versus two. And Gray uh, just is waiting for that red carpet to be laid out for them uh, before they can just swim through and get all those points racked up. Zuka is going to be a little bit of a deterrent, but they're down to down to 50 points, and they can still rack up more if Gray is feeling a little bit adventurous and if Denny's regulars can paint the path. It's going to really boil down to if Denny's regulars can not just paint the path, but also just get a few members out of there. They had to be deterred just a tiny bit with the Trisuga. What nifty movement from Gray, able to get a lot more points. I think they realized that at this point they had to just do something in order to get the points on the board. 22 points remaining is really good but of course it's not safe considering the, how this map is, sh is shaped out to be so jelly plus eagle spots are just gonna pop this rainmaker i think they're just gonna allow it to reset no just gonna use the rail to no success in fact just keep it in their own base got spotted up there in the rail and they lose jelly on top of it Dave railer is looking to looking pretty good right now but they got to keep this up yeah that back from uh harshi is going to be the ultimate no nonsense uh you had your fun in here but that is going to stop here and now and now guapo is the one to hold on to that rainmaker finally drop it off of their own plaid and starting to get some points on the board but not if herman has anything to say about it two down three down on the side of jelly plus ready goes flop just going to be harshi on that ball point new phone they have no way to affect uh the mid of the map at this current moment so gray going to re-grab that rainmaker going to grab their own cooler that they just dropped and uh, right now, Denny's Regulars has a ton of control in this game in the first two minutes. Yeah, Denny's Regulars is just doing a great job with this Rainmaker, just being just being able to throw Jelly off their game there. The entire team, that is not just one, but the entire team, Inkback actually expertly used around that area, just trying to get the Rainmaker, not just trying to get the Rainmaker, maybe get a few more out of there. And they need to do that in order to keep this game alive, but they lose the other fights in as well but though tiffle may have just put may have just moved up a little bit more than they needed to in that in that situation but at the same time jelly's just stuck having to play defense for about two and a half minutes they did try to get a put push up there but it didn't really amount to a whole lot they the ink back they had not getting much value that rainmaker is gonna likely be resetting here unless uh denny's regular is gonna be adventure picking up this one this one up which they will tiffle though in a, in a rock and a hard place rest of Denny's regulars now there to back him up hermit did go down though yeah, Typhlo is going to be the Rainmaker carry here. Not a role I'm assuming they were expecting to play, but the role they're playing nonetheless, and they're doing a good job of staying alive. But Guapo going to be rushing them, finally going to get that pick. Three versus two in favor of Jelly Plus Freddy was flopped. Actually just going to be Hermit alive for Denny's regulars here. So with two minutes to go, this is the chance that Jelly needs. They have that ink fact at the ready with that ballpoint new, but they have Zuka as well. They just have to start moving that Rainmaker, moving that fish to its pedestal across the map here. Hermit going to go down, getting a trade onto Jelly here. Guapo picking up the Rainmaker. We're going to swim right into the suction bomb and going to be taken out. And Typhlo back, putting on more pressure with their Zuka. Yeah, and, and yeah, the Zuka being used there, trying to just trying to make sure Jelly can't move too far up ahead. And that's where they'll just run into the suction bomb, just um, just find a little bit more time for Dane's regulars to protect this lead. And they try to try build for specials there. Ink just thrown out there, not able to, not able to get find one, but though Hermit is going down, but Hermit's been... 
That's what we're doing a lot. Trying to play the role of trying of distraction, trying to get as many picks as they get up front. But this is a dangerous time now for Denny's regulars, but a second too late for Jelly. This is gonna buy Denny buy Denny's regulars some time to respawn. Jelly's gonna have to pop this rainmaker um at this at this point. They're gonna have to pick it up to get the first checkpoint. That that rainmaker reset just kinda happened at a very rough time. Yeah, one minute left in this game, and Jelly has not been able to get any points on the board whatsoever. This momentum has been incredibly out of their favor, but it's Raymaker Humpback. There is no lead that is safe, especially a lead at 22 points. Jelly can absolutely win this game. They have to just believe a little bit harder. They have a numbers advantage. Guapo going to be grabbing the Raymaker once again, trying to get over to that checkpoint, but Gray is going to get the pick with the tri slosher and with just Harshi on the, on the ball point being the last one alive, trying to come around on this left side. 30 seconds to go. Denny's regulars can smell the victory here in this game, too. Yeah, but all that Denny's regulars needs to do just to try, just try to play this one very smart. You don't need to try to try to get get even more points. That Raymaker's in your territory. As long as you don't lo lose fights or find yourself down in bad positions, this is going to be key. So I need to see how Jelly is able to respond to this one. They lose Guapo and they lose Jelly on top of it. That was a double, I believe, on the, uh, uh, in, in the thick of things. And this delay three, this Rainmaker has reset and it's going to be staying in its bubble for the entire or for the rest of this game. Nice response to today's regulars. Not only winning game two, they stopped the, the winning streak that Jelly was building up. Yeah, that winning streak finally coming to an end uh, with, you know, a parting blow from, uh, I believe that was both Typhlo and Kuvia both getting two picks. Kuvia might have even picked up a third. I'm honestly not sure. Uh, just because of how, I mean, just all the advantage that uh, Denny's regulars had stocked up in that those final few moments of that game just absolutely actually played defense that entire time after a beautiful push to 22 points very early on in the game just textbook Remaker home back from Denny's regulars absolutely what they needed to get momentum back in their side and Kion we have a set on our hands I, I love it I love it when we're at this 1-1 one, one position here now this next map becomes even more important here with Robo Ramen zones I would love this to go all five of course Thank you. As you mentioned, send our hands. Then we go back to the to the second map. There, Denny's regulars. You mentioned very textbook. This is it was a classic case. So you could easily just try to chase for more points if you for some reason really wanted to. You had twenty two points made. You locked them down for a long time. You just want to stick to to that script. And if you're gonna get a win on the board, that's all you really needed to do at, at that point. They also had specials built up. The last thing you want to do is just get yourself caught caught out of position or losing a fight at a critical juncture because you mentioned. It's humpback rainmaker. Things can just swing by in a hurry. They didn't. They didn't allow that to happen. So, ramen zones is just now with jelly getting that momentum broken up here. Just a little bit of readjustment, I'd imagine, for jelly plus three equals flop. But this could be a fun zones map coming up. Yeah, and at this point, all of the other brackets in SOS have concluded. All eyes are on this set, the final set to be played for Swimmer Sink, and it's to decide our grand champion of Great White here. Uh, as you said, Kion, one-to-one, -one, incredibly interesting part of the set here. Almost smack dab in the middle. It's going to, you know, Spot Zones Robot Ramen could be, you know, that little bit of the pen the swing of the pendulum there, or it could just be another game in a very strong set between two very closely matched teams. Uh, and I, I'm just looking forward to it. Zones Robot Ramen, you know, is seen as one of the best map modes in this game um, as a common consensus, and I'm excited. I'm always excited to see this one, and uh, especially in a set like this where both these teams are just so close to one another. Can't wait to see how this map shakes out. It's going to really boil down to execution here. I wouldn't be surprised if Jelly pl uh, plus straight equals fl flopped here. It's going to switch over to a, to a weapon that has Trizuka. Probably gonna, they're guaranteed to have a shot on their hands. And they, well, they did have a Trizuka. It's on the squeezer this go around. On the other side for, uh, whoa, wait a minute. Orange okay, Zap Pipe and well. Squeezer. No cooler oh. on the side of Denny's regulars. Instead, they're going to be opting for that chomp power. Huh. Okay, so Orange Zap is a weapon I can safely say I have not seen in quite some time. I feel like it kind of gives the idea with the chumps and the close and the close quarters combat. But you, as you mentioned before, no cooler available. They're going to have to rely on on just getting pure value and not and not getting caught at, and not getting caught at the worst times imaginable. Jelly Buster equals flop. Just going back to the conventional Squeezer, T Tech, 52, and the Sniper. Why not go for the for the weapons that just paint a lot? I'm curious if Dane's Raiders can pull this one off. They're gonna be able to put zone the other direction. Kubia kind of deterring Guapo here with that Kraken. Yeah, Denny's regulars are going to be relying on their on their god gamer genetics if they want to win the Tad ta Cooler and current year Splatoon. They do have the lead. It's a bit of a fleeting one, but they have the lead nonetheless. Guapo gonna be throwing those strikes onto the zone, just trying to get some paint forth, and it's going to be enough 
to get Jelly the cap here. Hermit just doing Hermit things, getting another pick in the bottom of the map, just being so slippery, so hard to catch. And right now, I mean, Denny's regulars has the paint to keep that zone in their favor, but uh, Jelly absolutely has the paint to respond and keep it neutralized for as much as possible. So this is looking like it's going to be a game of inches. This is, as you mentioned before, a game of inches and just trying to see if you can get as much advantage as you can. There's Kubi. Oh no! It was it, it was the it was two members going down on that on that side. Hermit was just trying to find one of the members and things could be snowballing out of here in a hurry there as that, as that three down situation does kick in. Should be the lead change for sure for Jelly plus straight equals flop. But now let's see if they can keep this one up. This is with the tricky thing though. They got a lot of candy that they can work with, which can deter them just a bit. As soon as I say that though, the sniper does go down by, by, by the thick of things. Squeezer is the one that has a tries just gonna have to fire, just fire some lucky Trizuka shots, which lands on the Hermit of, 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 of all members, and they are still keeping this zone alive. Now Jelly Bunch straight with Bob running, the, running this one down. They got two down. They might be looking very strong here. Yeah, Hermit was the important pick to get for Jelly Plus Straight. It was flopped there. And right now, 20 points left on the zone timer. I mean, Jelly got an inch, and my goodness, did they take a mile with it. Already down to 15 points. If they can win this team fight, this will be a knockout, but Denny's regulars. Definitely has some words to say about it. They're going to get the zone cap back in their favor, but this team fight is still absolutely at large. Gray going to be pulling out their Zook. They're going to be popping it, trying to find the picks as Guapo, popping those strikes, trying to just get whatever value, whatever paint possible. Harshi's still going to be staying alive, and Jelly still going to have that zone in their favor. Jelly dropping onto the on his uh, lower left side and is going to get the pick on Gray with the assist from Harshi on the pencil. And four versus two count. This could be exactly what Jelly needs to get this knockout here in game three. They're doing a great job just finding just finding the key members that they needed to. Squeezer and Herbert, by the way, Herbert going down once more. Herbert's just trying to is just trying to be as slippery as they can, but their gains caught out each to go around. Jelly with the nifty moves, not able to get the pick. But right now they gotta get they may be able to get out of these belly points. As soon as I say that though, it's three down. Had to speak words, of course. This is a good time for Denny's regular. Try to get uh Jelly Bunch Eagles Club walked out, out of there. They gotta communicate the advantage. Hermit can stay alive and find a few picks, which they which they might be able to no, not able to find any, but that might have been just may bought, bought just off time. The lead three should help Denny's regulars, but they oh are my. left and right. That was almost insane moving from the squeezer, but they go down nonetheless. And 40 points to 15. Denny's regulars might just make this comeback happen. Here comes Typhoon with that chump power. And here we go. It's going to be one final team fight. A minute and a half left in the game. But we might not even go that far. But Herman gets taken out early. Gray finds another Fight. three versus three right now. Three versus two in favor of Denny's regulars. But one is stuck in a Kraken. And the squeezer is going to find yet another pick. Typhoon trying to stay alive for dear life. Hermit's jump gets camped. And Jelly holding on to the lead just barely. They're doing a really good job shutting down Hermit. Uh, for a good chunk of for a good chunk of this game, we are just seeing Herbert just trying to be as slippery as you mentioned before as they can with the inkwash, but just not able to find value when they really needed it. And Herbert again runs himself de down. Jelly might be able to get out of these penalty wins. Maybe the KO coming there soon. Nice fur furious uh, zones capture that they needed, and they pop the cooler too. They can still continue to play as aggressive as they can. They got 13 points remaining, maybe a little bit more. This is the Kraken that needs to displace them at this critical time, and they are able to get one. But are they able to get painting onto the zone to get with two down? They for sure can. Pinky, it's two down for, for so far for Jelly Plus Trade equals flop. Danny's regulars needs to keep the zone as long as they can. It's going to have to happen in overtime at this point. 20 seconds left of regular time is not enough for Denny's regulars to get down to the two points they need to get this lead. Zucobus Whale is going to be pincering, trying to get Kuvia, but they're going to stay alive for just long enough. And here come the tri strikes. Zone is neutralized with 10 seconds to go. And now Denny's regular has to get this cap in the next five seconds if they want to even take it to overtime. Jelly is still pinned to the zone, and it's going to be enough to hold on to it for just long enough. For Jelly plus trade equals flop to be able to take game three and be one game away from winning SOS. That was a, that was a nice attempt at coming back there from Denny's regulars. But I gotta give credit to Jelly plus trade equals flop in, in in terms of shutting down key members when they needed that push. The almost a Trizuka from the skies that just found her Herman. I don't think Herman was even expecting that Trizuka shot to land anywhere near them but at that but that pick was enough to eliminate any very any ninja-esque movement that they that they could have done to just surprise them and that allowed jelly plus straight equals flop to just continue to run with that lead all the way down to i believe 15 points remaining there i i gotta give i gotta commend Danny's regulars they trying to make something work there maybe a lack of cooler not being a lot not being allowed to play as aggressive but jelly almost had their number but that was almost a fierce combat that Danny's regulars pulled off honestly
Yeah, that was so incredibly close. I mean, they almost got the lead back uh, a little bit earlier, and they just... It was just an utter zone contestion battle for the last about 15 seconds. It was just so incredibly back and forth, but Jelly Plus Red Eagles Flopped was able to come out on top in just that one little instance, and now they have one more game to win in order to take the tournament, and they have two chances to do it, and now do or die here for Denny's regulars. They have to win both these games to win the tournament, or else they're going to go home at second place. Let's see what is going to happen. Game four is going to be taking place on Clamblet's Inkblot. This is a this is the map where Denny's regulars will of course need to win to force the game five. But they got if there's anything that we have talked about er earlier, we have talked about you know how how Krakens can just be used where geez they do have Kubia available on that's uh, on that heavy uh, splatling dugout. I believe the last time we we saw them they did plan a clan blitz map, but they but I believe they have used it just to just be just use it as a displacement tool if anything. They didn't really need the actual Kraken for for that strategy. So I'd like to see a lot more value out of Kubia with the Kraken, no matter what you see here um, from Denny's regulars to make this one work. Of course, Jelly plus straight equals flopped. They, they took that, they take that second map, they come back to it nicely. I'm sure they're just trying to find, find ways to make sure that they're done with this, this SOS tournament for good. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to what has worked super well for them. Of course, Sniper 52 and the same comps that had that dish on the previous two maps. I mean, yeah, but if you think back to their set versus uh, Happy Face, they were able to get a win on Crab Leg without even, you know, having to rely too much on that Kraken push. And we did see Harji on that custom E leader. Let's see what's coming back. It's not. It's going to be the Pencil coming out. No Kraken power for Jelly here. Denny's regulars going to be uh, rocking with their game one comp. And here we go in what is potentially the last game of SOS unless Denny's regulars is able to force game five. Yeah, Jelly plus straight equals swap, not opting for the Kraken, so they're just going to go with Snipe Rider, Shot being, being the two most viable, that you have Trip Strikes and Jelly, expecting a little bit more control and a little bit of coverage as much as they, they can in this case. We do see on the side of for Dane's regulars, they do have the heavy edit, they got coolers back, and of course the shot, and of course effectively the V shot in this case. So I want to see how Denny's regular executes this one. Again, they've had Jelly plus straight equals swap has had a permits number all game. I want to see... Uh, Hermit to get a little bit more value as much as he can out of that brush. Two down, though, is going to slow things down a little bit. Both teams, however, still building up plans. Yeah, Jelly's pushing forward, being so aggressive, taking these great positions with the 52 gal bolted by the wall. Just Jelly showing the strengths of the weapon, but uh, Typho has a strong weapon of their own and is called the Trizuka with the V shot. Going to be getting two quick picks, looking for a third here by the uh, stack area. The other shot is going to win the Ditto, though, and going to be setting the score a little bit back closer to even here. Zuka is going to be popped by Jelly here. It's just a complete neutral state right now. Uh, not a lot of clam economy on either side. Both teams have a power clam, but now Jelly starting to stock up here. They're getting ready for a big push, and Denny's regular trying to turtle on their platform a little bit, trying to just defend against the upcoming push. Yeah, yeah and the big thing that Jelly has is that they have a lot of map control. There's that crack that just flew by, and this is the time <laughs> as Denny's regular actually finds a, finds a suspecting shot that was just lurking in the ramp. That might have been that either might have been lucky or they just or it was calculated. But either way, they down pop the cooler. They got a power climb that is available. They will retake it, if anything a good chunk of mid, but they gotta see if they can continue to push these advantages. Trip strikes are available from Jelly but straight equals flop if they're able to use it. They do take out Jelly, who is just trying to lurk from the side, trying to go for the flank, but the 52 going down, they will get the quick respawn from the player, I believe. So both teams stuck into this neutral state for about two minutes in. Yes, the shot goes down, but I don't think it's gonna really mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Both teams almost equaled out at 14 clams apiece. Yeah, I mean, it's just a complete back and forth neutral game here with no points being scored. I mean, that's Clamlets, folks. That's, this is just how it goes sometimes. Kubi is going to be holding on to the power game as is Harshi on the side of Jelly here. Going to be throwing it away, though, and here comes that Kraken. This could be what uh, Denny's needs to break up this rhythm here, and that's going to be the Kraken jump to the basket, and it looks like no strikes to be charged. Quick points to 60 here for Denny's regulars, and they're going to be able to blow this game wide open here as Kubia. Still being a menace on the slick here as more plants find their way into the basket from the rest of Denny's regulars. And and the, and the silly thing about that crack and jump too is that it, they, they were able to not only escape with their lives, they won the succeeding fights afterwards. They were able to capitalize on even more points. And honestly, that and honestly, it was almost one of those pushes that was bound to happen. There, you, you you're, uh, we're like, okay, we're stuck into this neutral state. We may as well just get the crack and jump and just get points on the board. And boy, I I, I don't think they imagined getting an even bigger lead than they thought. 42 points remain is really strong so far. Jelly plus straight equals swap. They don't, they can't obviously rely on any crack and dumps. They have to just play, play very controlled and try to make sure that Denny's regulars don't, doesn't do anything to basically get another push in. 
But of course, Typho has a, has spawned another power I'm just gonna chuck it to the side. It's still a lot of control for Denny's regular Trizic is being used. Yeah, right now a minute 40 left in this game and uh, Denny's regulars does have the advantage. It looks like it might be a game five. Jelly has not really been able to get anything materialized in this game, but with two going down on the side of Denny's regulars, this is the golden opportunity that they might just need. Harshi on the pencil is going to be the clam carrier. Strikes are going to be coming out uh, onto the enemy plat. Denny's regulars are really struggling to find space in their own plat, but the power slam not quite making their way to the basket yet. Typho oh, is man. able to find two huge picks, and it's just going to be Harshi left alone with the pencil, forced to retreat back to their own plat. Great trying to cut them off and is now holding a ton of territory on the enemy plat with just one minute to go. Jelly is looking a little bit lost. Jelly plus Straight Eagles flop just got j j losing three at that critical juncture. They have to now that now that means the clans are gonna help spawn on Denny's regulars and and they could also shut the door on them if they if they decide to go crazy with another jump of their own. And it's two down on top of it too. They may not even need it. There's a lot there, but they didn't even want to sneak a push in. I'm actually surprised they they, they didn't even let that one go through. Now the dynamics of this game has slightly changed by a bit. Two members have gone down by by the thick of things, and now this is a little bit more manageable though. But that's 25 clams and four power clams have been spawned from denny's regulars yeah all the balls are in so are in the court right now denny's regulars has all of it showing right here four power clams locating all four members of the teams they are not scared at this point 15 seconds left of regular time and that's if jelly is even able to make a power claim in time it looks like they're going to be able to do it but it looks like they're already readying themselves for the crack and cheese to stop the overtime but the barrier gets broken to the other side of the map wait they might have thrown away they have to make it into the basket 42 that's the lead that's the tournament oh my goodness no way no way pinky that is how you end sos 144 they were set up with a huge crack and jump in the wings and jelly plus three equals flop is like no we're not letting you they snuck a push in and the and the best part too pinkies i think jelly knew they were going to tell you after the crack cheese but they, but given how this map is shaped that's a quick pass to the barrier and nobody was ready ready for it and we just saw one flick of the one flash of that screen pinky three power clans from denny's regulars that never made it in denny's regulars a little too cocky with all their balls showing to the world and jelly just didn't care they said you can do it we're gonna camp all your jumps with the strikes we're gonna sneak in right as you're jumping the beautiful counterplay to crack and cheese that's why you don't see crack and cheese on that map because it's so easy to get from one side to the other it's so incredibly fast and De and jelly using that reliance that tunnel vision against denny's regulars to take sos 144 only dropping two games in the entire tournament i don't think i i pinky i think it's safe to say i don't think we both expected the, the game to end the way it did but that honestly was actually more beautiful and you mentioned it too that is not a map you want to try to initiate a crack and cheese in, in a dire push they snuck the early sneak by the way to get it down to 60 points remaining was enough of was enough of a deficit for them to to break to break it through and if they're able to sneak a push in right through the front door it, it was game over i literally i think yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you saw the same thing i just saw like three power claims in and i'm like oh this is gonna be game and then just split just a split second later it was just jelly plus three equals flop breaking the barrier i'm like oh my goodness that was actually kind of beautiful now I, I could feel that little sense of unease when they were just, you know, all when, when they all had their power comes and they were all locating themselves. I just felt a little bit of unease in me. I was like, something is about to go very, very wrong. And <laughs> that just happened. And Jelly Plus Straight Equals Flopped are going to be your swim or sink 144 great white champions. So congratulations to them. Kudos to Denny's regulars for putting up one heck of a fight, one heck of a show in that four game grand finals and they did really well making it all the way through that bracket absolutely an incredible tournament but that is going to be it from us but before we go i gotta know kion where can we find you you guys can find me twitter blue sky and twitch kion 2570 of course twitter blue sky for, for the usual nonsense twitch for the variety i also want to extend a special shout out to super ryan who's been, who is our lovely producer for sos 144 so huge shout out to them um, that's all I want to plug. Where can the people find you, Pinky? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, shout out to Super Ren for being a great uh, broadcaster here for us. You guys can find me at Twitter.com at BrokenPiggy underscore. You can, of course, find me at Low Tide City this May, May 10th, 
through the 12th. And of course, you can find Kion at Momocon, May 24th to 26th. Make sure to sign a Forceful Tune on Star GG. Buy your con passes at www.momocon.com. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching Swimmer Sync presented by IPL. Have yourselves a great night, and I'll see you guys next time.